Roswell Media Sports. Welcome in to Kosciuszko Whippets Baseball here from Boswell Media Sports. We're on the air a little bit earlier as uh, things have kind of changed up a little bit because of rain last night. This game was supposed to be on the road. However, uh, the uh, field conditions elsewhere, you know, kind of changed things up. So instead of being at Louisville, we, the Whippets are hosting the Louisville Wildcats, and that's where we are here at the Italic County Fairgrounds, Breck Riley. Here in the press box, we got Donald back in the studio on Golf Course Road. And because of uh, the change, we will be going on the road on Thursday. So just a little switcheroo and, uh, you know, uh, bumped it up uh, a little bit to a 6 o'clock first pitch. So I still think that Thursday's games are 5 and 7. Uh, but we will, you know, kind of get that confirmed and give it to you. But we will uh, take a look at this Louisville Wildcat team come in at 5-5 five and five on the season. They're 1-2 and two in division play. They're coached by Coach Newley Long, and they are one of the uh, – one of the other ones that came over from Region 4 with the Whippets to bumped up into Region 3. The rest of the old region is still the same. You know, Choctaw Central, West Lauderdale, Northeast Lauderdale, League Central, they're still down in Region 4. They sent Kosciuszko and Louisville up north to Region 3. So the two, the one region win the Wildcats have is against Greenwood. They beat the Greenwood Bulldogs 16 to nothing. Just one game, though, as one of those, their second game in that series was uh, delayed because of weather. The two losses they have are to Caledonia, a 5-2 to two loss to the Cavaliers, and a, an 11 to nothing loss. So that's what it looks like for the Louisville Wildcats, the Kosciuszko Whippets. Come in to tonight's contest with a record of 8-6, and six, and they are 2-0 and oh in the division. Got those two wins against the Houston Hilltoppers, and this is uh, the team's second foray into division play. Last time we were on the air with you was on Saturday. That's the last time the Whippets took the field as uh, they had a long 10 inning affair here at the uh, fairgrounds and it was a losing effort to Choctaw County. The Chargers um, Ackerman came over and got a 10 to 7 win. Yeah, we told you 10 innings that was uh, 3 hours and 41 minutes, I think, is what we clocked that ball game in. A long ball game on Saturday where they uh, recognized the uh, 1974 state championship team. And uh, so the Whippets are looking to bounce back, and uh, this is where you got to bounce back is in division play because uh, then you start in the pecking order for the playoffs. You start trying to uh, slot into first place, second place, third place, fourth place. Uh, top four teams in the division make the, uh, the playoffs, and uh, these region games are the ones that you have to win. So a uh, very, very important game for Coach Cole McBride and the Kosciuszko Whippets. This is the Premier Medical pregame show on Thursday morning. Be sure to tune in to Breezy 101. You'll hear the Surf Pro Coaches Show. Coach Cole McBride and I will sit down and we'll talk Whippets uh, baseball. We'll recap the schedule. We'll take a look forward at the upcoming schedule. We usually like to uh, give our players of the game some uh, recognition and we we'll also uh, kind of talk about position groups. The last few times we've been out, we talked about the pitching staff and the outfield. We'll uh, talk about the, some of the guys that are keeping things uh, here in the infield this week. And who knows what else Coach McBride and I will uh, get up to on the Serve Pro Coaches Show. Uh, taking a look at the field conditions, they're pretty good considering all the rain that came through the area uh, last night. Uh, here in Kosciuszko, the weather wasn't as bad as it was in some other places of the state. Just a lot of wind and some heavy rain. But the Whippets uh, coaching staff and the players have gotten the playing surface looking very well here for uh, what is going to be a beautiful afternoon for baseball. 67 degrees uh, right now. Probably be somewhere in that neighborhood when we get to first pitch. And uh, also we do have a slight wind at a five mile an hour wind coming out of the west. And uh, that's off to our left here at the ballpark from where we're sitting. And he might have 10 or 11 mile an hour gusts. So I don't know if the wind's going to be as big of a, a factor as it was Saturday. A lot of wind at the ballpark on Saturday. But that uh, update, the field conditions and the weather update brought to you by the Itala County Co-op. We'll get you our Central Electric Power Association first pitch coming up here uh, momentarily. Off to our right uh, we have the Kosciuszko Lady Whippet 
uh, softball team. They are taking on Greenwood in a double header. And so that game is uh, going on off to our right. Uh, Whippets were up big when we started, when we got on the air here. So don't have an official uh, score, but they were uh, well in command of that game. That's also a division game for the Lady Whippets. So that's a very important series uh, off to our right up the hill. We'll update you on that as we go through the ball game. All right, now we'll put the starters on the screen so you could see them if you're watching the Atlas Furniture video stream. Those starters are brought to you by Holmes Community College. Braxton Smith will lead things off for the Whippets. He'll also be on the mound. It's John Wyatt Rusco batting second, playing left field. Benny Powell, the junior, the leading hitter for the Whippets. He's back in the lineup. He'll bat third, play center field. Aiden Howard bats fourth. He'll play third base. You got Baird Kewen batting fifth. He'll be behind the plate catching. The junior, Ryan Tillman, will be at shortstop. Bailey Powers, a junior, bats seventh, plays first. Holden McGee, a sophomore, uh, batting eighth and playing second base. And you got Andrew Mansell batting ninth and out in center field. And no designated hitter. Everybody that's in the lineup is uh, playing in the field. Taking a look at the starters for the Louisville Wildcats, Josh Emmons will bat first. Play shortstop. Caden White, he'll bat second, play center field. Cedric Hunt, he'll bat third, be the catcher. Mitchell Turner is on the mound. Wyatt Long will bat fifth, play second base. Caden Tompkins will be batting sixth and playing third base. It's Xavier Hunt batting seventh, he'll be in left field. Javante Rags will bat eighth and he'll play first base. And it'll be Caleb White in the number nine spot playing right field. So it goes Emmons, White, Hunt, Turner, Long, Tompkins, Hunt, Rags, and White. And for the Whippets, it's Smith, Rusco, Powell, Howard, Q, and Tillman, Powers, McGee, and Mansell. Braxton Smith is uh, your pitcher for Kosciuszko. Trying to give you some of his pitching stats. If we can get those uh, pulled up on the uh, on the monitor over here to our left. The Wildcats going with the gray uniforms, and they have, it looks maroon, but I believe it's supposed to be a cardinal. I believe that's what their colors are considered. Their helmets look very maroon, but the, the numbers on the, uh, the jerseys uh, look cardinal, and they also have those cardinal uh, socks. The Kosciuszko Whippets going with the maroon tops. They will have the gray block numerals and letters, white pants, white hat with a maroon bill, Kazi written, written in right white or gray across the chest. So there you go. That's what it looks like. The starting lineups are being called out. We're going to step aside for our prayer and our national anthem. So when we come back, we will give you uh, the starting, or I should say the first pitch. This is Whippets Baseball from Boswell Media Sports. Beauty of Spring starts at the Atala County Co-op. From your lawn to your flower beds, the Atala County Co-op will make it stand out against the rest with fountain, outdoor furniture, plants, and yard art. It's t-shirt weather, and the Atala County Co-op has a large selection of Old Row, Southern Point, and Strut and Cotton t-shirts, and new spring apparel from Ariat and Carhartt. For the perfect drinking experience, Grab a brewmate before you head out to the baseball or softball field. The Itala County Co-op, Highway 12 East in Kosciuszko. When an electrical shortage in your office causes extensive smoke and water damage or that musty odor indicates you might have a mold problem, you need a lot more than just help cleaning up. That's why SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands is the authority when disaster strikes. We offer all the cleanup and construction services to take your home or business to good as new and as soon as possible. So no matter what happens, there's just one call you need to make. Call SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands at 662-289-7473 to see how we can help you back to like it never even happened. Franchises are independently owned and operated. Have you been putting off coming to the dentist lately? Hello, I'm Dr. Adam Middleton from Autumn Ridge Dental in Kosciuszko. We are treating patients with a mindset we have always held, that proper, regular, preventive care can help keep your mouth healthy and functioning properly. We want all our patients to have a smile they can be proud of. Please call us at 662-289-7076 for an appointment. Come see us and we will give you something to smile about. Flu shots are now available at all Premier Medical Group locations for infants six months through adults. Come in today and get your flu shot. 
Just walk in and they will see you shortly. Flu shots are now available ages six months and up. Premier Medical Group in Kosciuszko, Carthage, and Holmes Community College in Goodman, and Trace Urgent Care. Premier Medical Group, PMG, good health is our priority. Boswell Media Sports. National Anthem just wrapped up here at the ballpark. Uh, we are ready for baseball here from the Itala County Fairgrounds. We're going to be a little bit behind that 6 o'clock uh, start time for first pitch, but, you know, it's not an exact science. We're going to be right here close to it. Hey, it's a little bit earlier than what we thought. We thought we were going to be on the road at Louisville, but we are here at the home ballpark, and we are – Ready for baseball. Imagine that the crowd will file on in. You got a lot of folks just now maybe get off work around 5 or 5.30. You got to go home, change, come out to the ballpark. So you can uh, get out here and support two of your Whippet programs as the Lady Whippets are playing off to our right. And yeah, Whippet baseball. I love when we have these double headers like this. You'll usually get a lot of folks at the ballpark. Maybe not necessarily as many as you would normally have tonight with the game. Not originally scheduled to be here and not changed until about, I don't know, 10 o'clock, uh, 11 o'clock this morning. So word uh, it takes a while to get out, but it is Braxton Smith getting ready to pitch off for the Whippets. Let's see, 23 and a third innings. He's got a 1-0 and o record. He has given up 18 runs, just 11 earned runs. He has struck out 21 and walked uh, 14. So there it is. We don't have stats for Lewis. There's them not available to us. Uh, we'll give you what we can and try to give you an update on softball off to our right before we get started here. Got a close. It's, let's see, 17 to nothing. Kosciuszko leading Greenwood at the start of the third inning there. So the Lady Whippets will have that one well in hand. And... Now we're ready to go here from Kosciuszko as Josh Ammons steps in for the Wildcats. Ammons is a sophomore. Smith will wind and deliver. First pitch strike. And that Central Electric first pitch is at 6.04. First pitch brought to you by Central Electric Power Association. Pitch number two well behind the batter. Imagine those guys from Central Electric might have been out a little bit last night. All that wind coming through, huh? they're getting your power back on. And one ball, one strike to count. Josh Emmons. Swings at that one. Fastball coming on the inner half of the plate. Maybe a little bit up as well. So Smith quickly ahead in the count. They set him up outside right there, well out of the zone. Run the defense down for you. Smith on the mound. It's Kewen behind home plate up the middle. Your infielders at shortstop is Tillman. Holden McGee at second at the corners. After this pitch, that's a called strike three fastball right down the middle. Whippet strikeouts brought to you by the Itala County Farm Bureau. Now batting oh. number seven, Caden White. At the corners, it's Aiden Howard at third, Bailey Powers at first around the outfield. It's Mansell in left, Powell in center, and Rushko out in right. A lefty Caden White, the center fielder, will step in. Comes inside for ball one. And a couple of that's Caden White. So yeah, we got Caden White and Caleb White. One of them plays center, one of them plays right field. That won't be confusing at all. This is the center field, Caden White. And he hits one in the left field. Mansell giving chase, gonna track it down in foul territory, right about the warning track over on the left side. 
Now batting the catcher, number eight, Cedric Hunt. Two outs in the inning, and Cedric Hunt comes to the plate. You know Cedric Hunt. You probably heard us call him Sugarfoot on the football broadcast. And he is a kicker for the Wildcat football team. He won the state championship for him back in 2022. Kick three times as time expired for the Wildcats to beat Mendenhall. Smith opens him up with a curveball, stays up a little bit. Wildcat football, back-to-back -back state champs. And a couple of guys I noticed on the baseball squad that were also on that football team. Fastball, strike one. Well, there's a curve ball hitting a shallow center field. Now Benny Powell ranging off to his left. He will make the catch. So the Wildcats go down in order. There were no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. <laughs> Half an inning complete, and we're scoreless here in the first inning. Here's something I bet you don't know. You could go to college for free. Do you have a 20 on your ACT? Yes. Whoa, 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 wait. So my tuition is free? Where? Home CC. Yes, every word you just heard is absolutely true. Goodman, Kosciuszko, Grenada, Ridgeland, Yazoo City, online. Does not matter. Why in the world would Holmes Community College offer free tuition with a 20 on the ACT? Simple. At Holmes, we don't want you drowning in college debt the rest of your life. You know, I have heard students with associate degrees from Holmes often make more money than four-year students with bachelor and master degrees. True. Plus, at Holmes, you get three-day weekends. So there's that. Sweet. So now you know. Your tuition is free with a 20 on your ACT at Holmes CC. No place like Holmes. Holmes Community College. Boswell Media Sports. Braxton Smith makes quick work of the Louisville Wildcats in the top of the first inning, getting a strikeout and two fly ball outs. It's the Whippets' turn here in the bottom half of the inning, and it will be Braxton Smith due up first. One, two, and three for the Whippets. Braxton Smith, John White, Rusco, and Benny Powell. First innings. For Whippets Baseball, they're brought to you by Pickles Drugstore. Pickles Drugstore on the east side of the square in downtown Kosciuszko. Got a big lefty on the mound for the Wildcats. That is Mitchell Turner. They got him listed as a freshman. So, big Mitchell Turner. Let's see. They have him. Uh, I got him listed six foot two fifteen. Well, I'll tell you. He is. All his warm up pitches have been from the stretch. I didn't see him throw any from the from the wind up. Uh, there are some pitchers that, you know, they don't like throwing from the windup. They'll pitch only from the stretch. But Braxton Smith will lead things off for the Whippets. We do have some stats for the Whippets, batting stats. Braxton Smith, the 214 hitter. He's got nine hits on the season, a couple of doubles. Well, now there will be a couple pitches from the wind up from Brax or from Mitchell Turner at least, and then there's ball up in the zone. Well, it's a fastball, stayed low and in. The Kosciuszko Whippet tennis team was playing today as well. I think they went on the road to Yapora. Maybe we try to find you an update on that. Oh, the tennis team's doing fairly well on the season. High and outside, ball three. Get a chant coming from the Whippet dugout. High, ball four. 
So Braxton Smith draws a leadoff walk on four pitches. That'll send John White Rusco to the plate. We get a courtesy runner is going to be Kenyon Weatherby. So Kenyon Weatherby got to come in to run for the pitcher. And it'll be Rusco stepping in on the left side of the batter's box. He has got that lefty-lefty matchup now. Fastball low. Turner having some control issues here early. Weatherby gets a pretty big lead. He's been held on by Rags over at first base. Center fielder Caden White not playing straight up. Turner took a little off of that one, was able to find the strike zone, even the count at one and one. Now, yeah, Lewis had that big win over Greenwood. Let's see, 16 to nothing. The ball's hit in the center field. Caden White comes in charging, has to go to his knees, but he's able to make the catch. That one looked like it might have played some tricks on him. It wasn't hit very hard. He had to come on and he kind of stopped a little bit and had to speed up. Well, that'll bring up Benny Powell, the Whippets' leading hitter, batting 400. He leads the team in hits, doubles, and runs. He didn't. He had one at bat in the game on Saturday, but he was banged up a little bit. He high and outside from Turner. Powell came in to pitch and then had one at bat, struck out in, the, in that game, but I understand he was banged up a little bit and he was taken out of the starting lineup. So maybe not at 100% on Saturday. And right now he squares around like he wants to bunt. Pulls it back. Weatherby going down to second. Ball goes into center field and Weatherby's safe. I think he would have been safe either way. He got a pretty good jump. Now a runner moves down to scoring position. Two balls and no strikes the count as Cedric Hunt will walk out to speak to his pitcher. So you got Turner on the mound, Cedric Hunt behind the plate, Tompkins at third, Rags at first, it's long at second, Ammons at short, Xavier Hunt in left field, Caden White in center field, and Caleb White in right field. A meeting on the mound is completed. Big lead for Weatherby out at second. Fastball high. Three and one. Oh, excuse me, three and oh. The count to the Whippets cleanup hitter. It's Aiden Howard on deck. Whippets playing a little bit with the lineup. Usually has been Baird Kewen right there behind Benny Powell, but Aiden Howard jumping up to that spot in the game today. Low and inside, ball four. Second walk of the inning. Whippets have runners on first and second. Aiden Howard was our player of the game on Saturday. Came in, had some good innings of relief. Well, at the Whippets, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a, a hit and run put on pretty quickly right here, given the speed that's on the base pass. Turner with a long look back at second. And swinging foul ball off to the home bleachers. Howard a little dejected right there, kind of grimaced a little bit like think that I thought maybe that was his pitch. Big gap out in left center field. As I mentioned earlier, Caden White kind of shaded over closer to right. Now they're going to move him back, play him straight up. Now he's, yeah, they're going to keep pushing him back to the left. Howard shows bunt, the pitch is up high, even the count up. Yeah, you saw Caden White get some coaching from the dugout, and now he moves – Almost straight up, maybe shading a little bit to the left. Oh. A little bit of a change up right there, and Howard able to catch a piece of it, but it fouls it off behind home plate. Just kind of tipped it a little bit. One down in the inning, no score here in the bottom of the first. 
So Inkazi is going Louisville with the Whippets threatening with the runners on first and second, just one out. Aiden Howard, the sophomore at the plate. Curveball. I'm just going to say it was a ball. I don't know where to tell you where it was because it was, it was close. Maybe, if anything, a little inside. It's about the only thing I can think of because it, it came right back in. Not a bad pitch from Mitchell Turner. Long look back at Weatherby at second. There's another foul ball back over our heads. Do see a couple of more cars pulling in the parking lot off to our left. I don't know whether that's baseball or softball they're coming to see. They're coming to see both. Pitch up high. For ball three to run the count full. Whoop, it's have gotten two base runners courtesy of walks already in the inning. That one comes in and hits him in the helmet. Woo. It was ball four anyway. But Howard takes one up around the eyes. That's ball four. The bases are loaded, and we get a visit to the mound. Brings up Barrett Kewen. Well, it doesn't look like there's going to be any pitching change. Does everybody hit? Kind of come in. But Coach and Cedric Hunt out there. Speaking with Mitchell Turner. Whippets have him loaded with Baird Kewen stepping up. Kewen leading the team in RBIs and runs driven in. Let's see, he's got 12. He overtook Benny Powell. Powell's got 10. Kewen on the season, a 2-11 hitter. He got four doubles. He has a chance right here to break it open in the first inning if he's able to find a on the gap. Now batting the catcher, number seven, Barrett Kewen. So Turner back working from the windup as the Bases are loaded, infield's back in double play depth, hoping they can get a ground ball to get them out of the inning. Fastball right down the middle. Figured Q wouldn't be taken right there given the control issues that Turner has been having. He and Hunt not on the same page there. Q and calls for time. Yeah, you could see that Turner was Suddenly kind of shaking off those signs. Didn't have a lot of head movement, but you could tell that he didn't. He couldn't come up with what Cedric Hunt was saying. Oh, breaking ball right there. Kewen can't figure out for strike two. So Ryan Tillman shortstop on deck. There's a ball hit to second base. And it's caught out of the air by Long. He flips it back to second, but Powell is back in. So a line drive out, two down in the inning. It keeps them loaded. Yeah, Long was playing back around the edge of the grass, and that line drive kind of came right back to him. If he's playing up a little bit, he might have to jump and get that one, but as it was, just playing back, he's able to sit down on it. High fly ball, center field. Caden White drifting to his right. Will make the catch and retire the side. Whippets leave him loaded. And no runs, no hits, no errors, but three left on base through one inning of play. 
We are still scoreless. When an electrical shortage in your office causes extensive smoke and water damage or that musty odor indicates you might have a mold problem, you need a lot more than just help cleaning up. That's why SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands is the authority when disaster strikes. We offer all the cleanup and construction services to take your home or business to good as new and as soon as possible. So no matter what happens, there's just one call you need to make. Call SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands at 662-289-7473 to see how we can help you back to like it never even happened. Franchises are independently owned and operated. When it comes to insurance, one size does not fit all. At Alpha, the Chris Coleman Agency in Kosciuszko, knowing the customer and their individual needs is what we pride ourselves on. We know how important it is for everyone to have the peace of mind that your insurance coverages are tailored for you. Our team recognizes your life and your unique needs. That is why we provide you with numerous insurance options, an easy claim process, and personal attention that is second to none, all at one location without breaking the bank. Call us today at 662-289-1024 or visit us at 235 North Madison Street off the square in Kosciuszko. At Alpha, the Chris Coleman Agency, we guarantee the right fit for you and all of your insurance needs. Boswell Media Sports. Second innings for Whippets Baseball brought to you by Kangaroo Crossing. We're scoreless between Kosciuszko and their arch rival, the Louisville Wildcats over in Wichita County. Winston County got a couple of schools, Nanawai and Noxipater, all over there. I think Noxipater's still a 1A school. Nanawai jumped up to 2A this year, I believe. Now, they might have gone back down to 1A. It's the, they're kind of right on that spot where they go up and come back down. But it will be 4, 5, and 6 for the Wildcats. Do up Mitchell Turner to lead things off. The pitcher. The, he's a freshman. Big kid. Six foot, 215, batting left-handed. First pitch from Braxton Smith is inside corner fastball for a strike. Smith didn't have to throw too many pitches in that first inning. He got him all down one, two, three. That one's fastball stayed way up high. Yeah, it was just nine pitches for Braxton Smith in that first inning. Pitch came in low and inside. Two and one to count. Oh, well, we got a walk to the mound. Coach Dew coming out to talk to Braxton Smith. Not sure what Coach Dew saw that led to this visit. That's some miscommunication. We've seen some miscommunication between pitcher and catcher this season. Early on in the season, Whippets not being able to get the signals in and everything. That pitch comes in and hits him on Turner on the arm. Oh, that one stinks. Put that one up here. Now batting the second baseman, number two. Wyatt. So Mitchell Turner will take first base on a hit by pitch and we'll get a courtesy runner. And come up and come up with who it is. We'll give it to you when we can get it. But we do have a courtesy runner. Oh, it's Wyatt Long stepping in. He Chases one, almost looked like that was a, a hit and run situation and our courtesy runner did not run. Uh, you hear over on the dugout, that they didn't want long to swing at them. That time Smith comes right at him with a fastball, swinging strike two. Caleb Ball is who we have as the runner over at first base. Thank God for football binoculars that we bring for the baseball broadcast. Ball's going to try to take second. Here's the throw down, and they get him. He's out. Great throw by Barrett Q and holding McGee cover in the bag. Good throw down there from Q and just good play. Thought the ball got a pretty good jump. 
Just a good pop-up throw by Hewitt. One down in the inning, and it's a one ball, two strike count to Wyatt Long. There's a little chopper to the left side. It's fielded by Howard. He'll throw, and Bailey Powers pulls it in for out number two. So what was first base with no outs quickly turned into nobody on base and two outs as Caden Tompkins, the third baseman, will step in. We believe there's been a final over at softball. Yeah, haven't been able to get it just yet. We'll check that in the exchange here after this inning. High outside ball one. Wind kind of dying down here. That time fastball finds the strike zone to even the count up at one and one. Over on deck is Xavier Hunt. Out of the zone, outside ball two. And Benny Powell playing straightaway center here. It's a fastball. Don't get any prettier than that if you're Braxton Smith. Right down the middle. Smith into his wind up. That's a called strike three. Second strike out of the game for Braxton Smith. And the side is retired. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. We'll go to the bottom of the second inning. We're scoreless between Kosciuszko and Lewisville. Hey, I'm James Matters with Farm Bureau Insurance. For the past six years, I've been blessed to serve our community as a local insurance agent. When most people think of insurance, they think of their home and auto, which is the natural thing to do. This year, I'm shifting my focus to what's important, family. Protecting your family with life insurance is the most important insurance decision you will ever make. I'd like the opportunity to sit down with you and your family to discuss your life insurance. Together, we can build a plan that fits your needs and your budget. After all, life insurance is more than a policy. It's a promise. A promise to take care of the ones you love no matter what. Give me a call, 289-4862. Your pharmacist is more than someone who fills your prescriptions. Your pharmacist helps you understand what medications you're taking. Your pharmacist makes sure your insurance is filed correctly. And your pharmacist answers any other questions you may have regarding your medications. Hi, I'm Rob Pickle, registered pharmacist and owner of Pickle's Drugstore. It is my goal to give you the personal attention you need to improve your health and well-being. My staff and I are here to serve you. Pickle's Drugstore, your hometown pharmacy, on the east side of the square in Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. Bottom third of the order will come to the plate for the Whippets in the bottom of the second inning. Seven, eight, and nine. Bailey Powers to lead things off for a scoreless. Kangaroo Crossing brings you Whippets' second innings. We have a 17 to nothing final for Kosciuszko softball in game one. And then we ha it's reported a 10 to nothing final in game two now. So they might have got that one in, that second game in pretty quickly. Couple of shutouts there for Whippet Softball. Last ball from Turner to Powers is well high for ball one. Swing strike one, even up the count. We can strike two. The bottom fell out of that breaking ball. One ball, two strikes. Chase the high one for strike three. It's the first strike out of the game for Mitchell Turner. And it's since Holden McGee to the plate. Now batting the second baseman, number 22, Holden McGee. A 
McGee looks at ball one, came a little low shoestring level. Fastball outside corner. Called strike one. A little, a little pop there from Turner. That time Turner lost his footing, almost fell down in his follow through. And the pitch was low. And Turner's got an odd, when he winds up, he does kind of delay a little bit. So when you, he starts, he's got a a little bit of a delay when he brings that leg up. Another curveball that finds the strike zone. You see what I'm talking about if you get over to YouTube and check out the Allen's Furniture video stream that we have up there. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Fouled off. Allen's Furniture also brings you that audio stream. You know, if you're driving or somewhere that you can't exactly watch YouTube, but you can kind of have it on, you can bring us up on the Breezy 101 app or breezynews.com. Listen there, all those streams presented by Allen's Furniture. 2-2 Two -two pitch. That's a curveball. McGee able to wait on it. Took a long time to get there. We'll make it remain two balls and two strikes. No score. Bottom of the second inning. Between Kosciuszko and Louisville. Big region showdown. Pitch comes in, hits him in the knee. Second hit batter of the game for Mitchell Turner. A one out base runner. We'll send Andrew Mansell. The left fielder to the plate, Mansell. One of two seniors on the club, he and Reggie Carter. I don't think Mansell's gotten any basketball offer since Saturday. I haven't seen him. We told you about three of them on Saturday. He's got a couple of the JUCOs that want to want him to come play basketball. Uh, he tried to bunt that one and fouled it over the first base dugout out of play. You heard me right. That one kind of came in on him. and He just self-defense bunt. And as I said, it did go over the first base dugout. Oh, Turner, the lefty, working from the stretch here. Once again, he and Hunt not on the same page, and Kewen, I mean, excuse me, Mansell will call for time. Yeah, you see Turner out there kind of giving the shrug, like I'm not quite sure what, what the signals were there. A little chopper left side, and Turner's going to get to it. He won't be able to throw. Now, just a little slow roller about halfway down the line. Turner got to it when he spun around. He looked like he was going to try to throw to second, but by then McGee was already at second and Mansell was getting down the line quickly. So it goes down as an infield single. First hit of the ball game for the Whippets. Then to, back to the top of the order we go. Braxton Smith. Smith was walked his first bat in the first inning. It looks like he wants to bunt. He couldn't, couldn't, couldn't connect with it. Strike one. If it's going a little small ball here, trying to move some runs over into scoring position. That time Smith sits on it, and the ball rolls away from Cedric Hunt. Back to the backstop, and the runners will advance. All right, do a job, Braxton. Come on. Runners on second and third now. One out. That's big, though. Takes away that infield fly. Well, now anything through the infield probably gets two home. Good looking pitch there from, from Turner. It's a curveball that just floats right back on the outside corner. 
One, two count to Braxton Smith. Hard hit ball, foul over towards the first base dugout. Smith got that one on the very end of the bat. Fouled it off to stay alive. Didn't give you the dimensions of the field if you're new here. 305 down the left field line, 315 at right field. 345 in right and left center, and 355 in those alleys out there on either side of the flagpole. Once again, Turner taking a long time. Uh, he's into his windup. A little slow roller. Turner's going to come off the mound and field it. He'll throw to get the out. Runs not able to come home. And Turner fields his position. Now batting right fielder, number 27, John Wyatt Rusko. Not easy right there either with the left-hander. So he has to spin all the way around and throw that one out. So. Brings up John Wyatt Rusko. Rusko in a pop up out to center field. Shallow center field is last at bat. He'll try to get the runs home. There's that curveball. Comes back, finds the outside corner with the lefty. Rusko at the plate. Whippets had him loaded in the first inning with only one out. Weren't able to bring anybody home. Can get that timely hit. Hoping Rusko can do it right here. One of the whippets is that one. Stays well outside for ball one. One ball, one strike to count. No score if you're just now tuning in. Kazius going Louisville. Last ball inside, ball two. There's a ball hit in the right field. It is going to get down. One run is in. Another run is going to come in to score. Well, bases clear and single for John Wyatt Rusko. Gives the Whippets the two to nothing lead. Exactly what the Whippets needed right there. Now batting center fielder number 11, Benny Powell. Rusko. We'll stand at first base, and Benny Powell coming in. Powell walked in his first at bat. Benny swings, and he can't figure it out. Sound like he might have got a tip of it. it Opened him with a little off speed. It took a little, took a while to get there. Roscoe. Takes a step, an extra step off of first. Now it's a balk. And he'll take second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Turner, well, he went into his windup. It looked like he was going to stop. Yeah, and he's, the coach is going to come out and speak to the umpire. And also the uh, infield umpire kind of walks up and talks to uh, Turner kind of mentions what he did wrong, but yeah, he, yeah, he, he kind of stopped once he started. I mean, he came and looked like he was gonna uh, fake a throw over to first, and then he just stopped. So it's a bonk. Whippets have a runner at second base. 0-1 count to Benny Powell. Rusko taking off for third. There's the throw down, and he is out. So Hunt throws out Rusko trying to take third base, but the Whippets get on the board. Uh, they get two runs on two hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We've played two complete innings, and the Whippets lead it two to nothing. Hello, I'm State Farm Agent Angel Albin McDonald on Highway 12 in Kosciuszko. Today, small business owners know just how much hard work is involved in starting and growing a business, but the challenges involved are not foreign to you. You're all in. Still, it doesn't hurt to have some good neighborly help. Like yourself, as a State Farm Agent, I'm a small business owner as well. 
This enables me to help you choose the right insurance coverage to fit your small business needs. So why not insure your small business with the fellow small business owner who also happens to be a good neighbor? Contact me, State Farm Agent Angel Alvin McDonald on Highway 12 at 662-289-3161. Have you been putting off coming to the dentist lately? Hello, I'm Dr. Adam Middleton from Autumn Ridge Dental in Kosciuszko. We are treating patients with a mindset we have always held, that proper, regular, preventive care can help keep your mouth healthy and functioning properly. We want all our patients to have a smile they can be proud of. Please call us at 662-289-7076 for an appointment. Come see us, and we will give you something to smile about. Boswell Media Sports. The Whippets get two in the second, the bottom of the second, two to nothing as we start the third inning of play. It will be the bottom third of the order, seven, eight, and nine coming to the plate for the Louisville Wildcats. That's the left fielder Xavier Hunt to lead things off. He's one of those Wildcats that plays on the football team, got a couple of state championship rings. Looks at a fast ball up for ball one. Braxton Smith still working it on the bump for the Whippets. Smith just 23 pitches. Slowed down a bit on that one, but still not able to find the zone. Stayed up. Swinging strike one. That was just a fastball that Xavier Hunt was well behind. These teams are going to play again on Thursday, so not your normal Tuesday, Friday situation like is normally what you have during the year. Another fastball that Hunt's caught looking at for a strike. So whip it to go on the road on Thursday as they just kind of swapped home and away. In the dirt, ball three. Whippets have a game scheduled for Friday. The pitch is outside, ball four. So that's the leadoff walk. Now batting the first baseman, number five. First Two one issued eight. by Braxton Smith. But yeah, the Whippets scheduled to go to New Hope on Friday. No New Hope, they got a big, good... Baseball tradition over there under the Trojans. Whip, it's taking a while to get the sign in as you had Barrett Kewen looking to his left and kind of fight that sun. First pitch swinging for Javante Rags is fouled off. Yeah, you got Kewen up there behind the home plate, and that sun is just settling right over that, right around the foul pole down in left field. So he's looking directly back into it, trying to get the Pitch call from Coach Dew. Swing and strike two. Rags chased that one well out of the zone. Whippets lead it two to nothing. Third innings for Kosciuszko Baseball presented by Renaissance Insurance. Smith. Swing and strike three. Got him to chase that high fastball. Third strikeout. Of the ball game for Braxton Smith. Whippet strikeouts brought to you by the Italian County Farm Bureau. The number nine hitter, Caleb White, will come to the plate. He is the Wildcats right fielder. He is uh, a lefty. One out in the inning now. Xavier Hunt. First base. Pitch is going to get past Hewen. Roll to the backstop, so Hunt's able to advance over to second base. That was a fastball on the inside and stayed a little inside. Now the Wildcats have a runner out in scoring position. 
What time he is able to find the strike zone is Braxton Smith. Even the count up at one and one. A one ball and one strike to count. The wind picks up back here at the ballpark, going straight in from center. One one pitches. White tries to lay down a bunt, showed it very late, got a small piece of it, but it rolled foul. Well, yeah, he didn't show it very early, just tried to get it, slap it down real late in the delivery. Smith will look the runner back to second. As he looks at Holden McGee, who's kind of calling out some signals there. You got McGee covering the bag. Tillman's playing his position. That pitch comes in, hits, hits him on the hip. That's the second batter that's hit by a pitch. Final batting, leadoff, shortstop, number one, Josh Evans. Going to go back to the top of the order. Josh Hammonds is a sophomore, struck out his first at bat. But now runners on first and second, one out, and it's Tillman going through the defensive play calls. The Wildcats threatening here at the top of the third inning. First pitch swinging is fouled back. Whip it's back in double play depth, waiting for that one ground ball that could get him out of the inning. Another long look back at second. Fast ball upstairs. Even the count up at one and one. Sun Insurance, third inning. And that ball gets away from Kewen, and everybody's going to advance up. Now that one kind of came in, and it's kind of a, a funky kind of situation there. As it hit, it almost looked like like you were doing the soft toss off the off the screen. As it hit, it, it came right out of the breadbasket of Kewen and rolled off to the right. And that pitch stays up for ball three. Three and one count to Josh Ammons. The leadoff batter. That time, Smith able to find the strike zone and make it a full count. Let's see, it is Caden White on deck, the center fielder. Fouled back right here into the screen behind home plate in front of us. Whippet tennis team did go on the road to take on Eupora today. Trying to find you an update on that one. Swigging strike three came inside and jammed him. Second strike out of the inning, fourth strike out of the ball game for Braxton Smith. Whippet strikeouts brought to you by Talley County Farm Bureau and the lefty Caden White will step in. He hit a foul ball down, hit it a long way down the left field line that Andrew Mansell tracked down for an out, his first at bat. Pitch comes way inside and low. One ball, no strikes. The count. Wildcats with runners on second and third. It's with a two run lead. Fast ball right down the middle. Evens up the count at one and one. Let's 
Sun still. I give Baird Q in some trouble looking to it, looking left, trying to find a signal. Another fastball strike from Braxton Smith. Time Smith working pretty quickly. Curveball outside. Two balls, two strikes. Stick around for our Wendy's post game. We got a long way to go, but we'll name our Autumn Ridge Dental player of the game. Wrap this one up. That one comes inside for ball three. Even makes the count full. Let's see, Cedric Hunt on deck, the catcher. If Caden White finds a way to reach base here. There's the pitch. Hit right back up the middle, and it's going to get through. One run comes home to score, and both runs will come home to score. we got a tie ball game. That was just a good piece of hitting from Caden White. The catcher, number eight, Cedric Hunt. So that will send Sugarfoot back to the back to the plate. Cedric Hunt, the catcher, he hit a fly ball out to center field. So we're tied up at two. Just a good at bat from Caden White. That's all you can say. And that one was about two inches from being a, a out as Braxton Smith it hit right off his glove as Cedric Hunt hits that ugly seeker foul ball over in the first base dugout. Mm. Barrett Kewen Whippets waiting on a ball to come back in. Cedric Hunt getting a little, his teammates kind of giving him the business a little bit about hitting it over towards the dugout. Runner takes off. Kewen with the throw down, and the runner is safe. Caden White sliding in. The pitch was a little bit high. But even the count up at a ball in the strike, but a pretty good throw from Kewen considering how high that pitch was of his own. He had to go up and get it and throw it down. He's already got, he's already caught one runner stealing. A 1 1 pitch to Cedric Hunt. Curve ball, good, good pitch. Comes right back into the zone for strike two. Long look back at second. That ball's hit into right field. It falls down in front of Rusco. Here comes the throw home and a great throw to hold the runner at third. A great throw by Rusco, but the Wildcats have runners on the corners. Two outs. Back to back singles. I can't state how great of a throw that was by Rusco. Because you had a fast runner over it in Caden White. He had rounded third and was on his way home when Rusco got the ball into Kewen. Oh, it's Mitchell Turner. The pitcher looks at strike one. Turner was hit by a pitch. Last at bat, that was leading off the second inning. He's a lefty. He does get up pretty close on that plate. That's a pickoff throw over to first. It's close, but Cedric Hunt in under the tag. I believe that's Hunt. I don't think they ran for him. Maybe no, they did. They put somebody in. Looks like number nine, maybe. 
high fly ball, left side of the field. It is Andrew Mansell calling everybody off who will make the catch for the final out. But the Wildcats do the damage. They get two runs on two hits. There were no errors, and there were two left on base. We're tied at two. We'll go to the bottom of the third inning between Kosciuszko and Louisville. Come on home to Abbott's Furniture and Appliance. Come on home. Come on home. This tax season, shop local. Shop at Allen's Furniture and Appliances. Ashley Furniture, Homestretch, Serta, and Sealy Bedding. Allen's also has GE Appliances and the best washer and dryer on the market. Speed Queen. Shop at home. Shop Allen's Furniture and Appliances. Kosciuszko and Durant. Come on home. Before you begin those do-it-yourself projects outside your home or business, be sure you know where your underground utilities are located. Always call before you dig. One easy phone call to 811 can protect you from injury and expense. Plus, it's the law in Mississippi. Make the call and avoid serious or fatal injury. For more electrical safety tips, contact Central Electric Power Association. Serving you since 1937. An equal opportunity provider and employer. Boswell Media Sports. We're tied up at two as we start the bottom of the third inning. It'll be three, four, and five coming to the plate for the Whippets. That'll be Benny Powell, Aiden Howard, and Barrett Kewen. Third innings for Whippets Baseball presented by Renaissance Insurance. Benny Powell was at the plate. As uh, the last inning ended, this John White Rusco was caught trying to steal third base. Uh, Powell, the leading hitter for the Whippets. As you seeing it scroll across the bottom of your screen right there if you're watching that Allen's Furniture video stream. 400 hitter. Leads the team in runs scored with 19. Whippets could use him here as a leadoff threat. Come on, guys. Now's the time. Let's go. But this Mitchell Turner, the lefty, still in the on the mound for the Wildcats. That one stays well outside. Ball one. Already 48 pitches for Turner. Fastball once again outside. Whippets and Wildcats played a couple of times last season as they, they were in the same division. Well, they were in the division together, not the same numbered division, but they were in the same division with each other as that pitch is outside. Two big wins for the Whippets. Let's see, March 24th, the last time they played, that game was at Louisville. That was a 13 to nothing win. March 21st was the game here at the home ballpark, and that was a 24 to 1 win. When Cedric Punt had walked out to talk to Turner. That's why we have the delay. Low ball four. Benny Powell draws his second walk of the game, and the Whippets have a very fast leadoff man on. Aiden Howard steps in. He was hit by a pitch his last at bat. Came up and caught him off the off the helmet. That was the fourth walk issued by Mitchell Turner. Lefty, lefty here. Able to finally find the strike zone for the first time here in the third inning. The lower part of the strike zone, if you want to call it that. Powell takes off. There's a ball hit to second. They're going to try to go for one, and it's dropped. Would have been a close play there at second anyway. I think they probably would have got him if Ammons holds on to the ball, but that likely goes down as an A and E6. 
Probably what they're going to score that as we have Merritt Kewen coming to the plate. Uh, E6. Good job, seven. Whippets have runners on first and second. Nobody out. Baird queuing at the plate. Might see him try to lay one, lay a butt down. He does indeed square around, pulls back. The pitch was elevated. Yeah, long is probably better there to try to go to first base to get Aiden Howard out rather than just try to get a Close play at second. I understand trying to get the lead runner, but probably go with an out right there more than anything. Kewen once again squares around to butt. Once again pulls it back as it is up and out. Whoop, it's got two runs in the bottom of the second, but the was full. Came back and answered in the top half of the inning. They had back-to-back -back hits. With two outs to tie the ball game. Pitch comes well inside as Kewen has to step out of the way of it. 3-0 count. Ryan Tillman, the shortstop on deck. Howard at first. Powell out at second. And a ball four chant coming from the Whippet dugout. And it is indeed strike one. You figure Q and not gonna not gonna take the bat off his shoulder right there. With Turner already walking one in the inning and then going to a 3 0 count. Kewen will go ahead and square around. They got the first baseman, Rags, charging in. And Kewen does lay it down, and it's going to be dropped. Go to first for one. No, it's dropped at first base. Powell's going to come home. Kewen's going to be able to take second base. Well, now they're sending everybody back. He's going to call that an infield fly. And he's sending everybody back. So, yeah, we don't know what's going on here. It was a butt. Turner came off the mound to try to dive and catch it, and he lost it. And then it was Rags that picked it up, tried to go to first, and Long not able to come up with it. Yeah, I'm not sure. They've sent Powell back to third. Howard standing on third as well. Kewen is at second. Yeah, I'm not sure what the call might be. Somebody's out. I guess they called infield fly on a butt, which, I mean, I, I guess may – Maybe it was, but that's just, I mean, it was, how high up does it have to be to be considered a fly? Because that was more like a line drive. Now batting number six, but I Ryan. guess it counts as an infield fly. And one out, and they sent everybody back. Well, the Whippets thought that they had had a run come home. Wow. So, one out, runner on first and second, and Tillman stepping in. Tillman hits one high and foul, and it's drifting out of play, and it will indeed get out towards the softball field. So, if you're not familiar, infield fly rules is runners on first and second with less than two outs. So that's the situation right there, but as a bunt, that was barely in the air. Tough call. Tough call against the Whippets. Especially when the were able to score one and get runner over to second and third. They're going to try to throw back and 
Powell is back in as the ball rolls away from Ammons. I actually think it might have hit Powell on the leg as he was sliding in. Tillman was 0 for 1. He had a fly ball out to center field that was caught in the end of the first inning. We're tied at two right now in the bottom of the third. And that ball is going to bounce away from the catcher Hunt. And everybody will move up a base. We'll look at that runners on second and third on the wild pitch. And the count is even to Tillman. One, one pitch is on the way. Fastball low. Ball two. You got, let's see, it's Caden White kind of scrolling. Whip is going to go with the suicide squeeze. Tillman fouls it off. Had the suicide squeeze ready to go. Powell was coming home, and Tillman got a little piece of it, but fouled it off. You're going to do that with Powell, probably the, maybe one of the fastest runners on the team. But now... Tillman down to his last strike. Turner once again. That's some, some confusion between he and his catcher. 2-2 two, two pitch. High outside for ball three to make the count full. First base is open. We'll see what Turner comes up with here. Maybe he pitches anything close to Tillman. He does. He comes right after him for a fastball. Tillman can't figure it out. Second strike out of the ball game for Turner. And it'll bring up Bailey Powers. Hey, hunt something you can drive and drive it. Let's go. So, yeah, that was just the old high, a little bit elevated fastball. Those things are hard to lay off of. And Tillman couldn't lay off of it. First pitch swinging is hit. Foul out over the first base dugout towards the softball field, which is empty now. As the Lady Whippets made quick work of the Greenwood Lady Bulldogs. 17 to nothing and then 10 to nothing. That game started at five. It was a doubleheader. Game started at five, and they were both finished by the time we were in the second inning. Pitch is going to roll away from Hunt, and Powell is able to come home. The Whippets will take the lead on the pass ball, and Howard's able to get over to third. Even the count up at a ball and a strike. Yeah. Yeah. Hunt made a close play as the Whippers had that brick backstop that was uh, able to bounce the ball back to him. He turned around and flipped it back to Turner, but it would have been well behind the time that Benny Powell was able to get to the plate. 1-1 one, one pitch comes inside. That ball's going to roll away, and Howard's going to come home. So Whippets are able to get two runs here and a couple of balls that Scooted past the catcher. Right here. I think one of one of those would probably be a wild pitch. One of them would probably be a pass ball. A two one count to Powers. Ball bounces on the plate and into the mitt of Cedric Hunt. Three one count. Let's hit this one hard. So Hunt will walk the ball back to his pitcher, and he'll bring in his entire infield to discuss something. 
It's a 3-1 count to Bailey Powers. Whippets looking for a two-out base runner. They push two across here in the inning. Side corner. Runs the count full. Three balls and two strikes. Payoff pitch. That comes in, hits him on the leg. Ball four anyway. That is the second. Yeah. Second batter has been hit by a pitch by Turner. Holden McGee steps in for the Whippets. He was hit by a pitch, like in the second inning. Swings at the first offering. Can't figure it out. 0 1 count. Yep, yeah, McGee hit by a pitch. The second batter in the second inning. Powers is going to try to take second, and he does. Ball rolls away well into left field, and Powers is going to get up and head to third. Oh. Yeah, the ball came up and hit off of Wyatt Long's foot or his arm or something, and it scooted uh, out into left field very quickly. And Long wasn't in too big a hurry to track it down, so Powers, when he saw that it was gone, he jumped up and headed over to third base. 1-1 one, one count. There's an excuse me swing. That, that McGee was not able to hold up on, so it'll be strike two. It's just inside and gets away from Hunt, but doesn't roll very far. Kind of stays right there under his feet. He jumped up like it was it was scooted away, but it stayed right there in the batter's circle. 2-2 Two -two count to Holden McGee, sophomore second baseman for Kosciuszko. The 2-2 Two -two pitch is a high fly ball, left side of the infield, calling everybody off is Tompkins, who will make the catch and end the inning, but the Whippets are able to get two runs on no hits, error, and one left on base through three complete innings. Kosciuszko leads it four to two over Louisville. The beauty of spring starts at the Atala County Co-op. From your lawn to your flower beds, the Atala County Co-op will make it stand out against the rest with fountain, outdoor furniture, plants, and yard art. It's t-shirt weather, and the Itala County Co-op has a large selection of Old Row, Southern Point, and Strutton and Cotton t-shirts, and new spring apparel from Ariat and Carhartt. For the perfect drinking experience, grab a brewmate before you head out to the baseball or softball field. The Itala County Co-op, Highway 12 East in Kosciuszko. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner is served to you daily at the drive-thru at both Kangaroo Crossing locations in Kosciuszko. Bacon, eggs, biscuits for breakfast, chicken tenders, barbecue sandwiches, burgers, and more for lunch and dinner. drive through and take home barbecue meat by the pound with sides of potato salad, baked beans, and coleslaw. All items in store are available for purchase at the drive-thru. Kangaroo Crossing on Veterans Memorial Drive and Highway 12 in Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. Kosciuszko takes the lead over the Lewis Wildcats 4-2. to two. So We get ready for tonight's fourth inning of play. It is 5, 6, and 7 coming to the plate for the Wildcats. It'll be Wyatt Long, Caden Tompkins, and Xavier Hunt, Wyatt Long, the second baseman, looks at strike one. He grounded out to third base back in the second inning. 
That ball's hit foul over the press box. Braxton Smith still on the mound. Ahead in the count, no balls and two strikes. Shakes off a sign from Baird Kewen. Oh, he's ready. Foul ball, another pitch. Off to the right. Once again, Smith kind of going, telling Kewen to go through the, the signals. Curve ball stays in for ball one. But Smith working pretty quickly once he gets the sign that he likes. But yeah, there it is again. Some confusion there. And Long doesn't ask for time. Usually in that situation, you'd see the batter ask for time, but he stayed in there. And looks at strike three on the outside corner fastball. Well, whatever pitch they agreed on, it worked. And that is the fifth strikeout of the game for Braxton Smith. Whip of strikeouts brought to you by Italian County Farm Bureau. Caden Tompkins steps in. He was a strikeout victim, his first bat. Fourth innings for Whippets baseball presented by Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts. Sullivan's across the McDonald of Highway 12. And Braxton Smith opens Tompkins with a curveball. A little bit, give some credit to his catcher on that one. Bringing that one back over, framing it. The fastball call strike two. Braxton Smith working quick when he when he can get the signal. Wind up. That pitch comes in and hits him in the in the hip. And the curveball just didn't break back the way that Smith intended. And that is what the third hit batter of the game for Braxton Smith. It'll bring up Xavier Hunt. Hunt walked his first at bat. Ended up coming around to score. Pitch stayed outside for ball one. Infield back at that double play depth. Upstairs for ball two. <laughs> Snap throw down to first. It's going to roll away from Powers, and the runner's going to be able to take. Second base. Tying, no, less at the tying run. We'll trip by two. Two and one to count to Xavier Hunt. As Coach Long calls Xavier Hunt down to talk to him. Halfway down the third base line. Excuse me, it is a 3-0 count. Umpire says 3-0. He shows butt, it's popped up right over here to us. Three balls and one strike. That one wasn't too far away from coming in the window. A little bit off to the left. That was a bunt, a late bunt attempt that popped up and got over that screen behind home plate. We've already had a bunt infield fly in this ball game. Not something you say that often. 3-1. It's hit into shallow left center field. Going to get down. Here comes the throw to the plate, and it is not in time. 
Run comes around to score. Oh, it cuts into the lead. Makes it four to three. Xavier Hunt stands on second base. He'll give him the single. Now batting number five, and Devontae he gets to second Ray. base on the throw. It's a four to three. There's one out in the inning, and it is Javante Rags stepping in at the plate. Rags struck out on three pitches in the third inning. Swings and gets a piece of that one. It fouls. I think it might have gone off Hewins' mask and the umpire's mask. <laughs> kind of sounded like it hit all three right there. But Kewen kind of walked it out a little bit, giving the umpire a chance to regroup, walked about halfway and tossed it out to Braxton Smith. Curve ball, up, ball once. First time that Rags hasn't swung out, out of pitch. He's very aggressive up there. Big first baseman. Smith looks the runner at second. They got him to chase one well out of the zone for strike two. That's a curveball that, that was coming right down the middle and curved out of the zone. And full rags into swinging at it. Look back at second. The pitch that comes in and it hits rags. Second hit batter of the inning, fourth of the game. There'll be runners on first and second. With Caleb White, the right fielder, coming up to bat, and I believe we're gonna get a pitching change. Not sure, but we bring everybody in, bring the infield in, so. It is Caleb White who was hit by a pitch. His last at bat, he ended up coming around to score in the third inning. But Coach McBride coming in, talking to his infield, setting the scene for you. Four to three, Kosciuszko leads Louisville here in the top of the fourth inning. But the Wildcats have runners on first and second and just one out. The number nine hitter, Caleb White, the right fielder, coming to the plate. That's where we stand right now. I'm not sure if there's going to be a pitching change. No. No pitching change. Yeah. So, Coach, on, DK, Coach McBride going with. Yeah, let Smith try to get out of this jam. I mean, after all, you're all just one. You're just one. Swing away from getting out of the inning. There's the bunt shown, and it's up in the zone for ball one. So we got Caleb White, the lefty. He tried to throw down a little slap attempt last time. Very, very late. Did not show bunt early in the delivery. Does it again. That time he did try to lay it down and comes up. Empty. One ball, one strike to count. Yeah, he's, he's, he's kind of chopping at it. He's not necessarily squaring around trying to go down third baseline. Look, it's got a couple of guys moving in. Comes back in, and that hits White. You see, we're squared around to butt. That's two in a row, five in the game now. And the bases are loaded for the top of the order. Still just one out. Ryan, Ryan Tillman will go out and speak to his pitcher. 
I know where you're supposed to be. So you got Josh Hammonds at the top of the order. He's got a pair of strikeouts. He's a sophomore shortstop. But nowhere to put him if you are the Whippets. Clicking to a one run lead. Whippets have everybody in on the grass, all the infield. Probably going home with it if somebody gets it. There's a first pitch swinging. It's a foul ball. Chopper to the left side over there by the Whippet dugout. Oh, one pitch is hit to Tillman. Tillman going to sit down on it, going to go home for one, and they get to play at the plate. It's a good play there by the Whippets. The bases will still be loaded, but they're two down in the inning. Now batting number seven, Caden White. Good play by Tillman and Kewen. Connect on the out. It'll be Caden White coming in, and White's a dangerous hitter. He drove in two of the runs that the Wildcats have. He had a single with two outs in the third inning. He's a lefty here. Hope it's open to get another one of those ground balls like that. Any bag will get you out of this jam. Smith just rears back and comes right down the middle for strike one. Good old-fashioned fastball, just rear back and throw it. That one came in a little bit low and in. Evens up the count. And a long top half of this inning. That fastball stays way up. Two balls, one strike to count. To Caden White. Other than that single, he had a fly ball that was caught in foul territory by Andrew Mansell down the left field line. That was in the first inning. Another one that's well up and out. Knock it down like a play. Smith got to be careful right here. Three and one. A hitter's count if there ever was one. Base is loaded. He walks it. That'll tie the game up. Let's see. That's Xavier Hunt that comes around to score. That is. Now batting the catcher, number eight, Hunt. Believe it or not, the second walk, just the second walk, issued. And that'll tie it up at four apiece as Cedric Hunt steps in. He singled his last at bat in the third. Knotted up at four apiece in the fourth. Fastball catches the corner. Strike one. Oh, one pitch. He's got him to chase. The high heat. For strike two. Oh, we need a strike. Trying to get out of the jam here. That time Q would set up outside, maybe trying to get Cedric Hunt to chase one. One ball, two strikes. Hunt calls time as Smith and Kewen, once again, they're kind of taking their time, getting, the, getting what pitch they like. Swing and strike three. Got him to chase that high fastball. 
And that will end the inning. But the Wildcats tie it up. Two runs on one hit. No errors and three left on base. Tied up four. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Premier Medical Group, PMG. Your good health is our priority. Did you know you do not have to drive for specialized care? Premier Medical Group in Kosciuszko partners with specialists in urology, cardiology, neurology, and orthopedics. Have your primary care provider refer you to a PMG specialist today. Premier Medical Group. PMG, good health is our priority. When birthdays and special occasions arrive, Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts is the best place to shop for fashionable and classic gifts, home decor, jewelry, hobo purses and wallets. They have new spring footwear and clothing arriving daily. And remember, Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts has the most recent wedding registry. Whether you're getting married or shopping for the bride and groom, shop Sullivan's. Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts, Highway 12 across from McDonald's in Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. Bottom of the fourth inning, we're tied at four. It's been a back and forth affair between Kosciuszko. Anything you can do, I can do better sort of situation as Kosciuszko got two in the bottom of the second. Louisville gets two in the top of the third. Kosciuszko gets two in the bottom of the third. Louisville gets two in the top of the fourth. So, like I said, it's sort of just turnabout is fair play. It'll be Andrew Mansell, the Whippets left fielder, stepping in. He's got a single. He singled in the second inning. He singled and came around to score. A big hit by John Wyatt Rusko. It'll be 9-1-2 and two for the Whippets. Bottom of the fourth inning. Fourth inning is presented by Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts. First pitch swinging, sound like maybe Mansell tipped it, but that's all he did. Into the, into the glove of Cedric Hunt. Pitch bounces off the mask of the umpire. One, one count. Can use a leadoff man on base. Fast balls, a cold strike two. Beat it that way, Andrew. Beat it to right. Let's go. Didn't see, didn't see Mansell square around the bunt. We've seen him try to bunt for base hit quite often. Don't think you'll see it here with two strikes. Pitch is well off the plate. It, you can see what Turner was trying to get that call is that the pitch prior to that was, a, was on the corner. It was a little wide out on the corner, but. Turner trying to see how much of that corner he can get or maybe to get Mansell to poke at one. Yeah. And got him to swing at that one. Swinging strike three. That is the third strikeout for Mitchell Turner as we go back to the top of the order. One down in the inning. Braxton Smith. Whip it's pitcher. He's 0 for 1. He walked in the first, grounded out in the second. Last ball catches the corner. Turner really loving that corner out there. He's going to set up shop. And he comes up and in right there. But yeah, he's been really working that corner. It's Monopoly. He's going to put a hotel right there on that, on that corner. What he's going to do. Tries it again. And this time it's a little bit low. 
And barely made it to the plate. Mitchell Turner, the big lefty, still in the ball game. They have him at 82 pitches. So this Louisville team sitting at 500 on the season, five and five, one and two in division play. They got the one win over Greenwood. Once again, tried the corner. Once again, that time is well outside, three and one. He'll take a few steps around the mound this time. Not sure. I think he might be limping a little bit. It looked like maybe he feels 100%. He walked around behind the mound. Now he toes the rubber and gets into his windup. And throws one off the plate for ball four. And the Whippets have a one-out base runner. Braxton Smith probably get a runner for him. Last time it was Weatherby that came in. Looks like it's going to be that way again. On the run for the pitcher, number 17, Kenyon Weatherby. So fourth walk. Right fielder, number 27, John Wyatt. Excuse me, the Let's go. third walk issued by Mitchell Turner. That's the first walk since the first inning. He's hit a batter. Hit a couple of batters since then. He hasn't walked anybody. Rusco on the bat, the Whippets right fielder. He had the big hit in the second inning, drove in two runs. It was a single. And the Whippets are hoping they could do it again right here. As the lefty looks at ball one. You see Cedric Hunt trying to bring that one back into the strike zone. Well, he did steal the base when he was on the first time. That comes, it hits him between the numbers. Another hit batter. Another base runner for the Whippets. Third hit batter of the game. Everybody, there's a lot of hit batters. Five for Braxton Smith, three for Mitchell Turner, and that will do it for Mitchell Turner, it looks like. So we are going to step aside for a timeout, a pitching change timeout. And we'll come back, we'll tell you who the new man is on the mound. We got it tied at four between Kosciuszko and Louisville, but the Whippets are threatening here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Pitching change timeout nice right here. This is physical therapist Haley Kewen at Reliant Physical Therapy. Our staff provides attentive, focused, and compassionate care for every patient to restore you back to your functional level. Hi, this is Tina McNeil, physical therapist. At Reliant, we offer outpatient physical therapy and post-op care for all ages and circumstances. When you need physical therapy, request Reliant Physical Therapy. Physical therapists Adam Bell, Haley Kewen, and Tina McNeil, along with assistants Veronica Wolferth and Rebecca Shields Hayden, transforming lives spiritually and physically. What Reliant. moves you down the road and through the woods? Central Tire Service and Central Trailer Sales with utility trailers in all sizes and truck beds. Central Tire Sales can customize to your specifications. Central Tire Service puts your life in motion with tires engineered to last for your ATV and vehicle. A full service mechanic and tire shop. Central Tire Service and Central Trailer Sales across from Prairie Farms and Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. Central Tire Service pitching change timeout. Mitchell Turner, his night is finished, but can't shut the book on him just yet. You got runners on first and second that are his responsibility. It's Caden Tompkins that comes in to pitch. So everybody's just moving around. You had Tompkins coming in to pitch. Rags goes from first base to third base, and Turner goes over to first base. I believe those are all the defensive changes that we have. So as of now, Mitchell Turner has gone three and a third innings, gave up two, just two hits, four runs, two earned runs. He walked four and struck out three. And, of course, the runners on first and second would be added to him if they're able to come around and score. So. Whippets have Benny Powell coming to the plate. Runners on first and second tied at four. So Caden Tompkins on to try to get the Wildcats out of this jam. Mark Riley with you here from the Italic County Fairgrounds. If you're wondering 
you saw the schedule that said we were supposed to be on the road. Well, they decided to do a little switcheroo, play it here tonight. I guess maybe Louisville got a little bit more rain than Kosciuszko did, and uh, the field conditions in Louisville not the best, so they decided to just swap around, play here on uh, today, and then we'll play in Winston County on Thursday. Benny Powell on. He's walked a couple of times this evening. Oh. I would say an off-speed pitch to open, but I'm, that's the first pitch of really I – mean, I watched him warm up, but didn't pay attention. So I don't know if that's his. Uh, that's where he sits or if he can come up a little bit more than that. But it definitely wasn't a lot on it. Powell going to show bunt. Bounces – Bounces to the plate for ball one. Yeah, that one had a little bit more on it. Well, yeah, I think the defense stayed the same other than the ones that we gave you. Whippets don't have anybody warming up. So whoever comes in, Powell tries to blunt that one, gets his piece of it, but it's foul. One ball, two strikes. The count to Benny Powell, the Whippets' leading hitter. Yeah, nobody warming up, so we assume whoever, if someone comes in in relief of Braxton Smith, it'll be somebody that's already in the field, has been getting some action. Well, Powell got to shore it up right here. Tompkins taking a long time. Well, look back at second. The pitch bounces to the plate, and Weatherby going to try for third. He gets there. A jump by Weatherby. I think he was going all the way, but the pitch bouncing to third. Credit to Cedric Hunt, who actually made a uh, throw to third and made it closer than it probably should have been. But runners on second and third now, and Benny Powell with a 2-2 count. Rusko was able to get over to second base. Ball is hit to second base, and it's Wyatt Long who jumps up and robs Benny Powell of a base hit. He underhand tosses it back to second, but Rusko was back in plenty of time. Yeah, Wyatt Long's got a big frame. I'd say he probably goes about 6-1 out there at second base, so he just robbed Benny Powell of a base hit and probably two RBIs. It'll be Aiden Howard to come in. Howard was hit by a pitch in the first. A pop fly out in the in the third. That time he hits it in the left field. It is going to get through to the wall. Two runs. Going to come home to score. Howard's chugging it out for second, and that's where he'll stop. Bases clearing. Double for Aiden Howard. Whippets take the lead, six to four. Now batting number seven, the catcher, Barrett Kewen. Aggressive approach there. First pitch swinging through the gap, left center field. A double. And two runs driven in for Aiden Howard. Cedric Hunt will walk out and talk to his pitcher, Tompkins. Now you can close the book on Turner. So three and a third, two hits, six runs, four walks, and three strikeouts. And three hit batters. So now you got Barry Kewen stepping in. Kewen hit into the – he bunted into the infield fly last time. I don't think I've ever said that before. But he bunted to an infield fly situation. Pitch inside for ball one. So Whippets have held serve so far with the two runs, two runs, two runs, two runs. I'd love to break the streak right here. If you can find a, a gapper from Bear Kewen. Swinging strike one. There's that. Wicked little change up that Tompkins is able to throw. 
You can almost tie your shoes by the time it gets to the plate. I mean, he's taking a lot off of it. Hard to follow if you're expecting, you know, something I'm quick coming out. That pitch comes inside. Q unable to hold off on the swing. Makes it two balls, one strike. Six to four. Kosciuszko leads it two runs already across in the bottom of the fourth. Howard getting an extra step out at second. Big lead. Throw to the plate now. It's hit down the line at third. Foul to the left of the bag. Two balls, two strikes. Oh, it's a 2 2. Count to the whippet catcher. Junior, Baird Kewitt. Aiden Howard once again inching a little step as Kewitt calls for time. Tompkins taking his time. Well, Tompkins will come set, take a look back at. Howard at second, throw to the plate. Another hard hit ball foul down the line at third. That's what happens when you start getting those, uh, those change up type pitches. He's getting ahead of them. <laughs> As we're gonna have a pitching change, maybe? Yeah, that's a pitching change. Very quick change right here. But Tompkins is coming out. It looks like Ammons is coming in. So we'll step aside for another pitching change timeout. Whip it lead at 6-4, to four, bottom of the fourth inning. What moves you down the road and through the woods? Central Tire Service and Central Trailer Sales with utility trailers in all sizes and truck beds. Central Tire Sales can customize to your specifications. Central Tire Service puts your life in motion with tires engineered to last for your ATV and vehicle. A full service mechanic and tire shop. Central Tire Service and Central Trailer Sales across from Prairie Farms and Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. Central Tire Service pitching change timeout. It is Josh Ammons coming on to pitch. He was at shortstop. So he'll come in in relief of Caden Tompkins. And I assume Tompkins looks like he's walking over to shortstop. So that looks to be the only defensive changes. Tompkins comes in and works very quickly. only faced two batters when he faced Powell and, and Howard. So it goes down as one-third of an inning. And technically, he didn't give up any runs. But a runner at second base is his responsibility, so if he comes around to score, he would. But it is Ammons on to pitch. He's a righty. And Howard t hopes it for third and he got a great jump the pitch was in the dirt anyway but Howard had a fantastic jump and was safe at third so he's over 90 feet away now full count to the Whippets catcher well Ammon's going to step off the rubber there Whippets in the lead, 6-4. to four. They've gotten two runs in this inning. Payoff pitch in the dirt. It will get away from the catcher. And it is ball four. Howard comes home to score. Kewen goes to first. And we got Ryan Tillman coming to the plate. Bradley Goss 
Courtesy running it first. So as the charge that run to Tompkins and close the book on him. Ryan Tillman in, 0 for 2, will strike out and pop up. 7 to 4. So Kosciuszko did break the streak of nothing but twos, two runs. Tillman fouls that one off. Start put up one of those crooked letters in the inning. That's what you like. Or crooked numbers, I should say. Goss with a decent lead over at first. Trying to take second base. Head first slide is in. A great pitch to run on as that one was in the dirt for ball one. Evens up the count. Fourth innings presented by Sullivan's Drugs and Gifts. Tillman, your sophomore, excuse me, junior, shortstop. Big lead for Goss. Curve ball. So called strike three. That should, I, I, only, I only had with two strikes, but okay. Anyway, <laughs> well, sure. Uh, Whippets get three runs. On one hit, no errors, and one left on base through four complete innings. Kosciuszko with a 7-4 lead over Louisville. When handling your finances, trust the expert staff at Watkins, Ward, and Stafford. Kenny Dungan, Tammy Irving, and staff are here to help their clients achieve financial success and ease your mind when it comes to financial questions for business and personal. Watkins, Ward, and Stafford offers QuickBooks online hosting solutions, payroll, and direct deposits. Watkins, Ward, and Stafford, leading our clients through the next generation of change. South Natchez Street, Kosciuszko. This is physical therapist Haley Kewen at Reliant Physical Therapy. Our staff provides attentive, focused, and compassionate care for every patient to restore you back to your functional level. Hi, this is Tina McNeil, physical therapist. At Reliant, we offer outpatient physical therapy and post-op care for all ages and circumstances. When you need physical therapy, request Reliant Physical Therapy. Physical therapists Adam Bell, Haley Kewen, and Tina McNeil, along with assistants Veronica Wolferth and Rebecca Shields Hayden. Transforming lives spiritually and physically. Reliant Physical Therapy in Meg's Plaza on Veterans Memorial Drive, Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. It's the fifth inning. Kosciuszko leads it 7-4. to four. The Whippets are able to get three in the bottom of the fifth inning, and they bucked the trend as it had been uh, a trend of uh, everybody getting two. Whippets got two in the bottom of the second. Wildcats got three in the top of the third. Whippets with two in the bottom of the third. Wildcats with two in the top of the fourth. Whippets got three in the bottom of the fourth. I guess it would be... Up to Louisville now to <laughs> match uh, set, I guess, if you will. Hold serve. Uh, they would have to get three, but Whippets lead at seven to four. Fifth innings brought to you by Watkins Ward and Stafford. It's tax time. You let Watkins Ward and Stafford handle your taxes. It will be Mitchell Turner stepping in. He was the pitcher. Now he is the first baseman. Turner is 0 for 1. Hit a fly ball that was caught by Mansell, and he was also hit by a pitch. He's a lefty. Step in. One new pitcher on the mound for the Whippets is Aiden Howard, who finds the strike zone with a fastball. So let's see what we have on Braxton Smith here. As Howard pitches, and that one's fouled off for strike two. Braxton Smith, four innings pitched, gave up three hits, four runs, walked two, struck out six. Well, there you go. The 
Sophomore Aiden Howard on in relief. Low. Ball one. Aiden Howard got some good innings of work on Saturday. Game against Choctaw County. Curveball gets away from him. Stays well out of the zone for ball two. Coming into the game, Aiden Howard had 18 innings pitched. And that has not factored into any decision as we have some sort of stoppage here. You give up seven hits, seven runs, walked 11, struck out 16. So uh, that's the what it looks like for Aiden Howard, as I said, coming into the ball game. Some kind of stoppage here behind the plate. I don't know if somebody's got some lights on in the parking lot, some something along those lines, usually kind of what that entails. Somebody might have got cold, gone out there, sit in the car and get warm. Well, they're going to have to do it in the dark and have your lights on when you do that, especially where well, you can, as long as your car is not pointed towards the baseball field. It looks like they got him. Looks like they got him turned off. Everybody's ready to go. 2-2 two -two pitch. Hard hit ball, but it's foul. Down the third base line. Another 2-2 two -two pitch coming from Aiden Howard. Whip it sophomore. That ball's hit high, high in the air, left field. Mansell camps out under to make the catch, for out number one. That one stuck up there for a while. One down in the inning. It'll bring up Wyatt Long, the second baseman. Long's 0 for 2 at the plate, but he's been flashing the leather out at second base. He robbed a couple of line drive base hits. From the Whippets. That tall frame. That one's hit to Aiden Howard, who plays it off the left side of the mound, runs an underhand, tosses to Bailey Powers for out number two. Good job there playing defense by the pitcher. They bring up Caden Tompkins. He's the shortstop now. Came in to pitch for one or two batters, and then went back to shortstop. He is 0 for 1 today. Struck out and he was hit by a pitch. Fastball high, eye level for a ball. Howard comes set and Tompkins. Gets one in on the handle that he sends down the third base line. Howard, one of those pitchers, chooses not to throw from a wind up. Working always from the stretch. Some pitchers just kind of have their preference. That's what they like. That's what they'll do. Good movement on a curveball right there. He comes in. Catches the inner half of the plate for strike two. Oh, that's funky. Here's pitch. Fast ball. Must have been just a hair off the plate. It's enough to where Kewen turns around and asks the umpire, <laughs> where, where do we need to go that's better than that? He's not, he's not arguing. He's just asking, what do we need to do? 2-2 two -two pitch. That's a curveball, a strike three. So Aiden Howard comes in and gets the Wildcats going down in order. No runs, no hits, no errors. 
Nobody left on base. That strikeout presented by the Italic County Farm Bureau. Whippets lead at 7-4, going to the bottom of the fifth inning. Electrical shortage in your office causes extensive smoke and water damage, or that musty odor indicates you might have a mold problem. You need a lot more than just help cleaning up. That's why SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands is the authority when disaster strikes. We offer all the cleanup and construction services to take your home or business to good as new and as soon as possible. So no matter what happens, there's just one call you need to make. Call SurfPro Northeast Delta Lands at 662-289-7473 to see how we can help you back to like it never even happened. Franchises are independently owned and operated. When it comes to insurance, one size does not fit all. At Alpha, the Chris Coleman Agency in Kosciuszko, knowing the customer and their individual needs is what we pride ourselves on. We know how important it is for everyone to have the peace of mind that your insurance coverages are tailored for you. Our team recognizes your life and your unique needs. That is why we provide you with numerous insurance options, an easy claim process, and personal attention that is second to none, all at one location without breaking the bank. Call us today at 662-289-1024 or visit us at 235 North Madison Street, off the square in Kosciuszko. At Alpha, the Chris Coleman Agency, we guarantee the right fit for you and all of your insurance needs. Boswell Media Sports. Bailey Powers lead things off for the Whippets here in the bottom of the fifth inning, seven, eight, and nine. So Bailey Powers holding McGee and Andrew Mansell. Whippets in the lead, seven to four. Bottom of the fifth inning, Josh Ammons on for his first full inning of work. He came in and let's see, he got what placed one batter, one and a half, I guess. He threw, came in during a count to Barrett Kewen. A 3-1 count, he threw one pitch and walked him, and then he got Ryan Tillman struck out on two pitches. Or I should say two strikes. If you're wondering about that, so are the rest of us. That pitch bounces to the plate. It's a ball this time. Yeah, Ammons is the third pitcher used by the Wildcats. Mitchell Turner got the start. Then it was Caden Tompkins who pitched to two batters. And then Asha Ammons came in, the sophomore who was playing shortstop. Powers ropes one past Wyatt Long at second base for a leadoff single. Whippets found out you got to go past Wyatt Long. You're probably not going to get one over him. He's tall. He's robbed a couple of base hits. But Bailey Powers is a good piece of hitting. Whippets leadoff man on, and it's holding McGee in. McGee 0 for 1. He had a pop up to third base, his last at bat. But he was hit by a pitch and scored. Snap throw down to first. Powers is back. Was a good, was a good snatch by Turner. He snatched it out of the ground. Otherwise, Powers would have made a move over to second. A pitch up and out for ball two. Get something going right here, guys. Let's go. Yeah, Holden McGee was hit by a pitch in the second, ended up coming around to score after a single for Mansell and then a single by John Wyatt. Rusco brought in a couple of runs. Pitch low, ball three. Three-o count to Holden McGee. You got Andrew Mansell, the senior left fielder on deck. High up in the zone, ball four. Whippets with the first two batters to come to the plate get on the base pass, and it is Andrew Mansell. Mansell, one for two. Singled and scored in the second and struck out in the fourth. See if the Whippets want to bunt him right here. No signal. That ball gets away from Hunt. Runners are going to advance. Pitch was well outside, and Hunt got a piece of it, but it just kind of popped off the edge of his glove. 
So 1-0 count. And both runners in scoring position for Andrew Mansell. Fast ball called strike one. Mansell taken all the way there. As Ammons had just walked previously McGee on four pitches. So. And a good curve ball. Comes back into the strike zone for strike two. Yeah, Ammons, it's, it's slow to get there, but it does a good break and comes back in and gets into the strike zone. One ball, two strikes. Mansell swings. He tips it into the glove of Hunt, and that is one down in the inning. That's the second strikeout for Josh Emmons. To the top of the order we go, Braxton Smith. At the plate, Smith is 0 for 1. He has reached base on a couple of walks. Out of the zone, blocked up nicely by Hunt. Do something with it, Braxton. Let's go. Let's say Cedric Hunt. Ground ball. Xavier Hunt is in left field. Rhythmic applause by the Whippets. Nope. Fastball called strike one on the outside corner. Credit most of that pitch to Sugarfoot behind home plate. He did a good job of grabbing that one and making it look pretty. Get it back across the plate framing or presenting whatever the terminology is these days. A new buzzword that people like to throw around. There's that curveball. Smith couldn't figure it out. Swing and strike two. <coughs> well, it's got a little bit of a late break, late break to it. There's that curveball again. This time, Smith waits on it, but he fouls it off. Out of play, off to the right. The lights are off over at Peggy Abel's field as the Lady Whippets made quick work of the Bulldogs from Greenwood, the doubleheader today. Another ball set over to the Good softball Jackson. field. 17 to nothing and 10 to nothing are the scores in that game. And we do have an update on Whippet Tennis. The Whippet Tennis team gets a Close win on the road up in Webster County. They took on Eupora, and the Whippets got that win. Four to three. It's a Whippet tennis team. So, well, pretty good so far this season. A lot going on here in the spring. There's the, cur there's the curve ball. It had a lot of movement, but that time it moved up in the zone. Two balls and two strikes. Whippets in the lead, seven to four. Bottom of the fifth inning, got a couple of runners on second and third. Braxton Smith at the plate. That came all the way behind him and somehow didn't hit him. Man, that one, somehow Cedric Hunt was able to make the catch. That was interesting. Smith, another foul ball out of play. Good at bat so far by Braxton Smith. That Ammons pitch count up. You got that, you got a pink sleeve. I guess you can wear a pink sleeve. You just can't wear a white sleeve. Ball's in the dirt. Smith is going to take off. They're going to try to get play on a rundown. And that pitch is going to, Hunt's going to throw it into left field. Powers comes around to score, and so does Holden McGee. So it is a walk, and two runs come home. 
Smith ends up at second base. Now the pitch got away from Hunt and Powers was on his way home, but Hunt jumped up. And he was going to go back to the bag, but McGee had come on too. So they're going to have a traffic jam over third base, but Hunt overshot Rags down at third base and threw the ball into left field. That makes it nine to four. And John Wyatt Rusco coming to the plate. Rusco had a single and two runs driven in back in the second inning. Looks like he wanted to butt Ammons pitches off the plate. Still just one out in the inning. Whoop it's with a nine to four lead. Rusco the Lefty and the runner takes off for third. Smith is able to get there. Smith with a good jump. The ball's popped out of the glove of Hunt, so but I think Smith probably would have got, got there standing up either way because he had a great jump. Now a runner over at third base, 2-0 count. A little bit's right fielder, junior, John Wyatt Rusco. Swinging, fouls it off. Long way down that third baseline towards the Whippets new locker room facility. That's the former Whippet football locker room. Whippets moved into that there in the fall. Swinging strike two. Hit that outside corner. Let's go. Might have got a little piece of it. Evens up the count at two and two. There's that curveball. It's popped up out of play. Infield, or I should say, left side. And Caesar Hunt able to make the catch. Stayed down the line in front of the Whippet dugout. Initially thought that one was going to drift on out. But it's two outs in the inning, and it's Benny Powell stepping in. Now batting the center fielder, number 11, Benny Powell. Powell's walked a couple of times, and he had a line drive to Wyatt Long at second base. Was, had, a, had a base hit and two RBIs taken away from him because it was – a hit that you would want, but Long was just able to well, jump up and grab it as the curveball hits the dirt and bounces off of the chest plate of Cedric Hunt. It doesn't roll far enough for Braxton Smith to come home. Makes it one ball and no strikes. Yeah, Benny Powell hit a line shot, Taylor made line drive, and Wyatt Long just jumps up and pulls it out of the here. Last, last ball, strike one. To even things up. Took a little something off of that one and it stayed outside for ball two. Two balls, one strike. Fifth innings for women's baseball brought to you by Watkins Ward and Stafford. Just off the square, downtown Kosciuszko, Natchez Street. Swing and strike two. Powell over the top of that one. Tax time. You can get your taxes taken care of. Watkins Ward and Stafford. coming up soon. you got a couple of weeks left before you got to pay Uncle Sam or yeah. Uncle Sam pays you. Benny Powell swings at a high fastball and that is strike three. But the Whippets are able to get a couple of runs on 
one hit. No errors and one left on base. We'll go to the sixth inning, and Kosciuszko would lead nine to four. From agent Angel Albin McDonald on Highway 12 in Kosciuszko. Today, small business owners know just how much hard work is involved in starting and growing a business, but the challenges involved are not foreign to you. You're all in. Still, it doesn't hurt to have some good neighborly help. Like yourself, as a State Farm agent, I'm a small business owner as well. This enables me to help you choose the right insurance coverage to fit your small business needs. So why not insure your small business with the fellow small business owner who also happens to be a good neighbor? Contact me, State Farm Agent Angel Alvin McDonald on Highway 12 at 662-289-3161. Have you been putting off coming to the dentist lately? Hello, I'm Dr. Adam Middleton from Autumn Ridge Dental in Kosciuszko. We are treating patients with a mindset we have always held, that proper, regular, preventive care can help keep your mouth healthy and functioning properly. We want all our patients to have a smile they can be proud of. Please call us at 662-289-7076 for an appointment. Come see us, and we will give you something to smile about. Boswell Media Sports. We've played five innings of baseball, and Kosciuszko has a five-run lead over the Louisville Wildcats. Game one of a two-game series, Region 3 opponents. Whippets trying to remain undefeated in the region competition. They got the two wins over Houston a couple of weeks ago, and as I said, trying to stay undefeated and uh, try to uh, clinch a playoff spot and then try to work on that that pecking order in the in the playoffs first place second place third place fourth place depending on who you who you want to who you match up with in the in the first round of the playoffs it's very very important you want to get those you want to get the one or two seeds for sure as you would be you'd have home field advantage in the playoffs Aiden Howard first pitch to Xavier Hunt is swinging strike one got him over the top there Seven, eight, and nine do up. Xavier Hunt, Javante Rags, and Caleb White. Let's see. Xavier Hunt is a single in the ball game. He also walked. He's got to score a couple of runs. Fast ball inside corner, strike two. Howard made quick work of the Wildcats in his first outing in the fifth inning. Got him, set him down in order. One, two, three. The Whippets got four innings of work from Braxton Smith. It's a called strike three. Second strikeout of the ball game for Aiden Howard. Strikeouts for Whippets Baseball presented by Atala County Farm Bureau. They bring up Javante Rags, who's playing third base now. Yeah, he's third base. He was playing first. He moved over to third. Rags is... He reached on a hit by pitch and he struck out. That time it's a chopper that takes a high hop. Smith is going to grab it and throw. Not going to be, no, they did get him in time. That was a bang, bang play over at first. I thought that he was safe. Rags was really getting down the line. And when I say number 17, Caleb White. When I say that ball was a high hop, that ball looked like a pop-up. So they're gonna they're gonna appeal. Is that what they're gonna do here? Yeah, I guess that's what they're gonna do. Yeah, I guess this was just um, uh, Coach Long wants to speak to the uh, first base umpire. But Rags is still standing on the bag at first. Uh, he is indeed going to remain out. But yeah, credit Braxton Smith on that one because when that ball popped off the ground, it it looked like an infield pop-up. I mean, it was high in the air. So 
He had to wait for it to come down and credit him for coming over and making the play in between shortstop and the mound. That time it is Caleb White trying to lay down a bunt down the third baseline and it's foul. The lefty hunt. He's done that a couple of times tonight. And he's also been hit by a couple of pitches because he's standing so close to that plate trying to lay down them bunts. He's been hit twice. He came around to score in the third inning. Six innings for women's baseball presented by Alpha Insurance, a Chris Coleman agency. High fastball out of the zone. Yeah, Caleb White, as I said, he's, he's that left-handed batter, so he's able to just kind of punch one down the third base line, get out of the box quickly. Looks at strike two there. Great pitch, Howard. A little fast ball. So Howard, a strike away from getting the Wildcats down in order for the second straight inning. One, two, pitch, curve ball, strike three called. That will do it. Third strike out of the game for Aiden Howard. The Tallahassee County Farm Bureau strikeout ends the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. Go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Kosciuszko with a five-run lead. Come on home to Adams Furniture and Appliance. Come on home. Come on home. This tax season, shop local. Shop at Allen's Furniture and Appliances. Ashley Furniture, Homestretch, Serta, and Sealy Bedding. Allen's also has GE Appliances and the best washer and dryer on the market. Speed Queen. Shop at home. Shop Allen's Furniture and Appliances. Paziesco and Durant. Come on home. Come on home. Come on home. Before you begin those do-it-yourself projects outside your home or business, be sure you know where your underground utilities are located. Always call before you dig. One easy phone call to 811 can protect you from injury and expense. Plus, it's the law in Mississippi. Make the call and avoid serious or fatal injury. For more electrical safety tips, contact Central Electric Power Association. Serving you since 1937. An equal opportunity provider and employer. Boswell Media Sports. Sixth inning, Kosciuszko will sit four, five, and six to the plate. Aiden Howard, Baird, uh, Kewen, and Ryan Tillman. They lead it by five, nine to four. Let's see, everybody's you know, still in their same positions. Josh Ammons is at the on the mound for the Wildcats. Now batting the pitcher. Aiden Howard had the big hit. Aiden Howard. Bases clearing double that drove in a couple of runs in the fourth inning. He's had a pitch to Jim so far. He's faced the minimum since he's come in. Retiring the Wildcats in order in the fifth and in the sixth. Could try to extend a little something right here. First pitch high, sky high, right side. It is long coming in, kind of lost a handle on it, lost his hat, but able to finally get it down. Yeah, long. Like I said, he lost his hat, but that one was a long way up in the air. But long at second base, able to pull it down. One pitch, one out, and it's Baird Kewen with its catcher stepping in. He hits one down the line at third, scooped up by Rags. Throw goes up, but a good jump by Turner coming down and putting the foot down. Two pitches, two outs here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Just some good defense there, showing you the 
athleticism. I thought for sure that that one was getting over the head of Turner. I don't know much, but I bet Tillman does not swing at the first pitch. That was right. It's right down the middle for a strike. You don't want to give a pitcher a three pitch at inning. That's something you want to do. So it doesn't matter what it looks like, you're not swinging at that one. Curveball, that, that good looking curveball that Ammons has that come, comes back in for a strike. 0 oh 2. That'd be a very quick inning. That pitch is inside, curveball. Stayed inside, one ball, two strikes. That's a called strike three in the outside corner. So that was a very quick inning. Six pitches, no runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. We'll head to the top of the seventh. Kosciuszko with a nine to four lead. Beauty of Spring starts at the Atala County Co-op. From your lawn to your flower beds, the Atala County Co-op will make it stand out against the rest with fountain, outdoor furniture, plants, and yard art. It's t-shirt weather, and the Atala County Co-op has a large selection of Old Row, Southern Point, and Strut and Cotton t-shirts, and new spring apparel from Ariat and Carhartt. For the perfect drinking experience, grab a brewmate before you head out to the baseball or softball field. The Atala County Co-op, Highway 12 East in Kosciuszko. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner is served to you daily at the drive-thru at both Kangaroo Crossing locations in Kosciuszko. Bacon, eggs, biscuits for breakfast, chicken tenders, barbecue sandwiches, burgers, and more for lunch and dinner. drive through and take home barbecue meat by the pound with sides of potato salad, baked beans, and coleslaw. All items in store are available for purchase at the drive-thru. Kangaroo Crossing on Veterans Memorial Drive and Highway 12 in Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. A very fast bottom of the sixth inning. Josh Ammons throws six pitches and gets the whip. It's retired. Uh, Kosciuszko in the lead, nine to four. And the top of the order coming to the plate for the... Louisville Wildcats, Josh Evans, the pitcher, stepping in. He's 0 for 3. A couple of strikeouts and then uh, grounded into a fielder's choice in the fourth inning. Aiden Howard still on in relief for the Whippets. First pitch is outside, up and out for a ball. Once again, stays a little bit up and in for ball two. Seventh innings presented by Reliant Physical Therapy. Pitch comes up and in again for ball three. A lot of these guys got to eat some physical therapy after the game. Let's see the. Let's see. There's been five hit bats been for. Louisville and then three, maybe four, for Kosciuszko. I'm going to rub some dirt on him. Fastball, that time Howard's able to find the zone. For strike one. Look, it's got four innings of work from Braxton Smith. Man. Howard has come back to battle back and make the count full. Whippets with a five-run lead in the final inning. Howard shakes off a sign, and that'll cause Josh Ammons to call for time. This time, Howard has it ready to go. Payoff pitch right down the middle called strike three. That is the fourth 
strikeout of the game for Aiden Howard. Fourth strikeout through just seven batters faced. One down, the strikeout presented by Italic County Farm Bureau. Caden White steps in. White is one for two. Single with a couple of runs driven in. Walked in the fourth. Howard comes right after him with the fastball. Strike one. Kewen and Howard not on the same page, and Kewen will jog out to the pitcher's mound to talk with the sophomore, Aiden Howard. It's got a, they got a young squad. You got a lot of young players contributing. Let's see, you just have, what, one senior in the lineup right now, Andrew Mansell, who's in left field. But you got juniors in Benny Powell, Rusco, Powers, Kewen, and Tillman. And then you got sophomores and Howard, McGee, and Smith. So you got some, some young guys on the team. Caden White fouls one off over the batting cage on the third baseline. Mix it. No balls, two strikes. Howard comes set, here's the pitch. Bounces off the plate and off the mask of the umpire. Umpire gonna need some reliant physical therapy too. He's taking a few off the off the dome this evening as Kewen does the blue a solid. Walks the ball back to his pitcher, so umpire can have a little moment. Umpires always appreciate that. That makes the count one and two. As the pitch comes well inside, even up the count at two and two and two. Yeah, let's see. Four innings of work from Braxton Smith, where he gave up three hits, walked two, struck out six, and gave up the four runs. Since then, it's been smooth sailing for. Aiden Howard, another ball that's hit foul. Next time Whippets are be on the road on Thursday at Louisville. So Tuesday, Thursday, not Tuesday, Friday. We'll go over there, and I believe the games will be at five and seven. I don't think that has changed. Curve ball is well up high around eye level, makes the count full. So Caden White, the lefty, second straight full count by Howard. That one hits off his glove. He's going to collect it and throw, goes over the head of Powers. And Howard. We'll run back over and get it. Not sure what they'll score that. Maybe an error. But Howard had that one hit off of his glove and go up in the air. And then he tracked it down. And I think he just rushed himself a little too much. Now batting the they're going to call it an error. Oh, E1, but... Yeah, as I said, that one went off his. Well, it's just a tough, tough call, tough break there. Because if if he doesn't try to throw that, then he doesn't get issued an error. Cedric Hunt, Sugarfoot, what they call him, comes in and looks at ball one. The catcher today is one for three. Struck out, and he's got a single. Let's hit the third base. Smith will go to right field. And then comes a throw from Rusco over to the dugout, and that'll send a run home. 
and uh, it'll end up at third base. Will Cedra cut? So, two errors on the play. Smith tried to go to second to get the lead runner, end up throwing it in the right field. Then Rusco comes up humming it at third. It goes over Smith's head, and it goes into the dugout. So Xavier, no, Caden White's able to come home, and Cedric Hunt ends up at third base. And it is Mitchell Turner coming in. Low ball one. Turner today 0 for th 2. A couple of pop-ups to left field. And he's also hit by a pitch. Fast ball, eye level, ball two. Pitch trying to get out of the inning and close this one out. Nine to five, they lead at top of the seventh. The Wildcats have a runner just 90 feet away and only one out. Pitch finds the strike zone. First strike of the at bat. Mitchell Turner, the lefty, is really up on that plate. But as I said, he's got two pop flies to left field. So left side of the infield and Andrew Mansell uh, taking note there. That one's hit right back up the middle. That one didn't go to the left field. They're going to hold Turner at first base. So another run comes home to score. The runner on first base and Wyatt Long stepping in. Yeah, that one didn't go around third base. That was just right up the middle. To the left of the bag, it's second. The second baseman, number two, Wyatt Long. Mitchell Turner's going to get a pinch runner. Got to be a pinch runner because he's not the pitcher anymore. That's number nine, whoever that is. We'll find the, the roster here. Tyler Glenn is what I have as a sophomore. Running number nine, so it makes it nine to six now. And Wyatt Long, he's 0 for 3 today, the Wildcats' second baseman. Fast ball, outside corner, strike one. I think the first curve ball that's thrown, Glenn's going to be trying to get out to second. Another fastball on the outside corner for strike two. Well, whip it's desperate for an out right here with a nine to six lead. Now he tried to go outside again and was a little bit too far outside. One ball, two strikes. Stick around for our Wendy's post game show. We'll wrap this one up. Name our Autumn Regional Player of the Game. We hope we're recapping a Whippets win. If the team can find two more outs real quick, that's what we'll be talking about. But the Wildcats have not gone down easy. Pitch rolls away from Baird Kewen behind the plate. I should say bounces off his glove. Didn't really roll as that was a curveball that was behind Wyatt Long. And Kewen tried to go back to get it, but it scooted off to the left side. Thankfully for the Whippets, the runner, Glenn, did not move. He stayed at first. I think that he had, he had run out and then was running back to the bag when it happened. On a swing and strike three. We're out number two. 
It's the fifth strikeout of the ball game for Aiden Howard. The Talley County Farm Bureau presents with its strikeouts. Caden Tompkins stepping in. He's the shortstop now. He came in for a pitch to a couple of batters. He's 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts. And he was hit by a pitch in the fourth inning. First pitch is up and out. We started our game at 6.04. So if you're thinking we started at 7 and we've had a very quick rolling ball game, no, we did not. A little chopper hit down the line. Blooper in the third, over the bag at third base. Two out single. Runners on first and second. Tying run comes to the plate. It's Xavier Hunt. Now batting left fielder, number 12, Xavier Hunt. Xavier Hunt has struck out, singled, and walked. That will warrant a visit to the mound by Whippets head coach Cole McBride. Runners on first and second. Whippets with a three-run lead, 9-6. to six. Here on the top of the seventh inning, seventh, seventh innings for Whippets Baseball are brought to you by Reliant Physical Therapy, and we are going to have a pitching change. So we will take a pitching change timeout. When we come back, we'll tell you what's happening. Whippets lead at 9-6. to six. They need one out to get out of this one and win the game against the Lewis Wildcats. Therapist Haley Kewen at Reliant Physical Therapy. Our staff provides attentive, focused, and compassionate care for every patient to restore you back to your functional level. Hi, this is Tina McNeil, physical therapist. At Reliant, we offer outpatient physical therapy and post-op care for all ages and circumstances. When you need physical therapy, request Reliant Physical Therapy. Physical therapists Adam Bell, Haley Kewen, and Tina McNeil, along with assistants Veronica Wolferth and Rebecca Shields Hayden. Transforming lives spiritually and physically. Reliant Physical Therapy in Meg's Plaza on Veterans Memorial Drive, Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. What moves you down the road and through the woods? Central Tire Service and Central Trailer Sales with utility trailers in all sizes and truck beds. Central Tire Sales can customize to your specifications. Central Tire Service puts your life in motion with tires engineered to last for your ATV and vehicle. A full service mechanic and tire shop. Central Tire Service and Central Trailer Sales across from Prairie Farms and Kosciuszko. Boswell Media Sports. Central Tire Service pitching change timeout. And coming on to pitch for the Wits will be Junior Cooper Stevens. All he's got to do is get one out for Kosciuszko. Runners on first and second. They lead it 9-6. to six. Make a play, D. Let's see. Defensive changes. We had, I guess, Braxton Smith went out of the game. So Howard went to third base and Smith is out. So that's all it is. But it's Cooper Stevens on to pitch to Xavier Hunt. Pitch is up a little bit for ball one. Aiden Howard went two and two thirds innings. Gave up just two hits, struck out five. Gave up two runs. That pitch is elevated up for ball two. Two balls, no strikes. So the runners on first and second would be Howard's responsibility. He did not walk anybody or hit anybody. Pitching stats. There's a throw down to first base. Close. Pitch was up in the zone for ball three. 3-0 three -oh count to Xavier Hunt. Let's see, Cooper Stevens only having with two-thirds of an inning pitched. He's given up two hits, three runs, walked two, struck out two. So those are the 
Stats that I have for him. 3-0. Pitch up for ball four. Walked them on four straight. And they are loaded for Javante Rags. Whippets just need one out. Make a play, defense. Get a ground ball right here. Anybody. Tying run over at first base. Javante Rags is 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a ground out. And he's another one that was hit by a pitch. Fast ball up. Ball what? So one ball, no strikes the count to Javante Rags, who's playing third base now for the Wildcats. Pitch off the plate, ball two. I don't think the Wildcats are swinging at anything. Stevens has yet to find the strike zone. Working from the wind up with the bases loaded. Able to find the strike zone on the fast ball there. Two balls, one strike to count. There you go, same spot. Let's go. It gives Rags a little bit more to think about now. He's going to get that bat off of his shoulder. Yeah. Low inside ball three. Nowhere to go if you're the Whippets. Nine to six, two outs, top of the seventh inning. Javante Rags at the plate. Right down the middle, strike two. Well, here we go, everybody moving on the pitch right here. Full count, two outs. Whippets lead it by three. Who's gonna win the matchup here? Stevens. As the pitch, here it goes. That's a called strike three, and that does it. Cooper Stevens comes in, gets the strikeout, and that will end the ball game. Kosciuszko gets the win, nine to six. Wasn't easy there at the end, but the Whippets get it done, and they move to three and zero oh in region play. We're going to take a break, an extended break. We come back. We'll wrap it up and name our Autumn Ridge Dental Player of the Game. Here's something I bet you don't know. You could go to college for free. Do you have a 20 on your ACT? Yes. Whoa, 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 wait. So my tuition is free? Where? Home CC. Yes, every word you just heard is absolutely true. Goodman, Kosciuszko, Grenada, Ridgeland, Yazoo City, online. Does not matter. Why in the world would Holmes Community College offer free tuition with a 20 on the ACT? Simple. At Holmes, we don't want you drowning in college debt the rest of your life. You know, I have heard students with associate degrees from Holmes often make more money than four-year students with bachelor and master degrees. True. Plus, at Holmes, you get three-day weekends. So there's that. Sweet. So now you know. Your tuition is free with a 20 on your ACT at Holmes CC. No place like Holmes. Holmes Community College. What moves you down the road and through the woods? Central Tire Service and Central Trailer Sales with utility trailers in all sizes and truck beds. Central Tire Sales can customize to your specifications. Central Tire Service puts your life in motion with tires engineered to last for your ATV and vehicle. A full service mechanic and tire shop. Central Tire Service and Central Trailer Sales across from Prairie Farms and Kosciuszko. Your pharmacist is more than someone who fills your prescriptions. Your pharmacist helps you understand what medications you're taking. Your pharmacist makes sure your insurance is filed correctly. And your pharmacist answers any other questions you may have regarding your medications. Hi, I'm Rob Pickle, registered pharmacist and owner of Pickle's Drug Store. It is my goal to give you the personal attention you need to improve your health and well-being. My staff and I are here to serve you. Pickle's Drug Store, your hometown pharmacy, on the east side of the square in Kosciuszko. Renaissance Insurance is your neighborhood insurance partner. 
Renaissance Insurance makes you feel at home with your home insurance. When you hit the road, Renaissance Insurance makes sure it's with the right auto coverage tailored for you. Renaissance Insurance takes the hassle out of sorting through business insurance. One stop, complete coverage. Call Robbie Robertson or Bradley Tyler at 662-289-4621. Renaissance Insurance, Court Square, Kosciuszko. Wendy's without the Wendy's app is like nugs without the sauce. <gasps> or a Frosty without the fries. <gasps> or a hamburger without the fresh beef. No! Level up. Get the app to order ahead, order delivery, earn free food, and get app-exclusive offers. One app, all the Wendy's. Offer for a limited time at participating Wendy's. Terms apply. App registration required. Fresh beef available in continuous U.S. handling your basket. finances, trust the expert staff at Watkins, Ward, and Stafford. Kenny Dungan, Tammy Irving, and staff are here to help their clients achieve financial success and ease your mind when it comes to financial questions for business and personal. Watkins, Ward, and Stafford offers QuickBooks online hosting solutions, payroll, and direct deposits. Watkins, Ward, and Stafford, leading our clients through the next generation of change. South Natchez Street, Kosciuszko. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner is served to you daily at the drive-thru at both Kangaroo Crossing locations in Kosciuszko. Bacon, eggs, biscuits for breakfast, chicken tenders, barbecue sandwiches, burgers, and more for lunch and dinner. drive through and take home barbecue meat by the pound with sides of potato salad, baked beans, and coleslaw. All items in store are available for purchase at the drive-thru. Kangaroo Crossing on Veterans Drive and Highway 12 in Kosciuszko. Have you been putting off coming to the dentist lately? Hello, I'm Dr. Adam Middleton from Autumn Ridge Dental in Kosciuszko. We know life has been busy and routines have changed for many. However, we do not want you to neglect your oral health. We are treating patients with a mindset we have always held, that proper, regular, preventive care can help keep your mouth healthy and functioning properly. We want all our patients to have a smile they can be proud of. Please call us at 662-289-7076 for an appointment. Come see us and we will give you something to smile about. Hello, this is Dr. Paul Gundy of Autumn Ridge Dental, and we salute the Kosciuszko Whippet player of the game. And now that's something to smile about. Boswell Media Sports. Kosciuszko Whippets get the win here on Tuesday night from the Itala County Fairgrounds. This is the Wendy's Post game show, and we'll have a quick wrap up for you. Nine to six is your final score. The Whippets uh, able to close it on out. Let's see, give you the uh, the rundown on uh, on this one as the Whippets were able to get two in the bottom of the second, two in the bottom of the third, two in the bottom of the or three in the bottom of the fourth, two in the bottom of the fifth. And let's see, the Wildcats got two in the top of the third, two in the top of the fourth, two in the uh, bottom of the fifth, and there was uh, two in the top of the seventh inning. And so that's what it looks like, nine to six. Whippets get the win. They move to, let's see, it should be nine and six on the year, nine and six on the year, and three and zero. Oh in division play the so region three play is where they uh move to and that's big because that almost uh, guarantees you a spot in the playoffs getting that third win so uh, that's a big uh, big win for the whippets even though it took them a little while to earn it there late in the game the whippets got four innings of work from braxton smith gave up three hits walked two struck out six uh gave up four runs and he hit what, two, oh, excuse me, four batters. Aiden Howard goes two and two-thirds innings, gives up two hits, uh, doesn't walk any, strikes out five, gives up two runs, and then Cooper Stevens goes one-third of an inning. He uh, walked one and struck out one right there to end the ball game. It was Mitchell Turner, Caden Tompkins, and Josh Evans working on the mound for the Louisville Wildcats. And so now it's time to name our Autumn Ridge Dental player of the game. Whippets didn't have a lot to ride home about in the offensive category. So we'll go with the pitcher, Braxton Smith, who uh, got the win. Braxton Smith, as I said, four innings pitched, gave up uh, three hits, 
Uh, Walk two, got six strikeouts and gave up four runs. So Braxton Smith is your Autumn Ridge Dental player of the game. We're going to have game two of this series on Thursday. So we'll be going over to Louisville on Thursday. And as far as I know, those games will be on your normal time, JV at five and varsity at seven. Now, if something changes, we will be sure to let you know. Be sure to follow the KSD Sports uh, Twitter on X, Twitter, Facebook, or the Kazi Baseball on X or Twitter, and they will give you those updates. We hope to be able to provide you video coverage, but at Louisville, it's kind of wherever they set you up. Some places have enough room. Some places don't have enough room. So we're going to have to wait and see when we get there on Thursday. Other than that, you will be able to hear us on your radio dial on Breezy 101, and then, of course, on the apps at breezynews.com and on uh, the Breezy 101 app. Thanks to Donald back at the studio, Golf Course Road, keeping us on the air this evening. And a big thank you to Melissa, Lisa, uh, Laura, Ashley, BMO, everyone involved, Billy, everyone involved in Boswell Media Sports. It's a group effort, a team effort that keeps us on the air. Whippets get the win tonight, 9-6. to six. That wraps up the Wendy's postgame show, and we are going to get on out of here and go eat some supper. A big win for the Kosciuszko Whippets. So for our entire crew, Breck Riley signing